Start. Ladies and gentlemen, what's good, y'all? It's the Joe Meister, Chris Gary. You got Daniel DiZabecki out in Poland. You got Jay Wolf out in Southern California. And this, once again, even though we would love to have said this is the Rising 44 review, Rising 44 review, this is actually the Rising Landmark 6 preview. But yeah, yeah we'll this is still Pokemon Fight Song. Next week. We'll, we'll do the reviews next yeah, week. We'll, both of them. Yeah, we'll, we'll basically recap both of these fight cards next week. But still, though, this is still Focus Fights Audio and you know, we tend to shoot the shit. And I don't care about YouTube's algorithms. They can go suck a fat one for all I care. But still, though, <laughs> point of the matter is we're here. We were here to talk about Rising 44 last week. And real quick, just wanted to say that it was kind of boring. Like, seriously, I don't get how you can have so many so many fights end in the decision and either they were one-sided or just simply nauseating, like they maybe wanted to fall asleep, you know? Because I mean, because shit, the guys I actually did. Mm -hmm. It's because they didn't know the assignment. Too many fighters didn't know the assignment and weren't throwing superior rule set fried roll strikes. That's what it comes down to. I mean, there, there were and there were several of them. At least for the three free fights on the pre on the YouTube prelims. The third one had some superior rule set action in it, some flying stomps and stuff, but the rest of the fights didn't. And it's because the guys didn't know the assignment. And I, I would like Sakaki Barasan or Shingo san before the fights to send out like, like a pamphlet or something or just sit the fighters down in a room and say, hey, this is the assignment. We want soccer kicks. We want stomps. We want grounded knees. We want 12 to 6 elbows. We want grounded up kicks. Everything. We want the superior rule set action. So if, if you go, if you get taken to the ground, or if you get a takedown and go to the ground, we, we want to see some elbows. We want to see some 12 to 6 elbows. We want to see some grounded knees. That's what that's what the people want. We, we want you to know the assignment. And also, I think it also suffered from not having enough fights. If you remember, there was only eight or nine fights on that card in one kickboxing match, right? So and I, I think that, that – Yeah, ten, 10 in total. So, okay, so it was nine – mixed martial arts bouts and one kickboxing bout. I think that has something to do with it as well. I'm I'm eagerly anticipating this landmark six event because it has 16 bouts with only two kickboxing. So that, that means we've got 14 superior rule set mixed martial arts action bouts. And I'm really excited for about that. I want to see if that theory proves correct. I think hopefully these fighters know the assignment better than the 44 fighters. And hopefully we get a bunch of superior rule set action. Mm, of course, okay. of course. And need right. to remind y'all mm -hmm. before we get to Daniel, mm -hmm. Rising Landmark 6 from Nagoya is going to be taking place inside the six-sided or eight-sided steel cage, I guess. I don't know. Six sides, eight sides, don't matter. Yeah, it's going to be a cage. It's a <laughs> six-sided uh, uh, cage. Yeah, of course. It's going to be in a six-sided steel cage. It's going to take place this Sunday at midnight Eastern time in the United States, 9 p.m. Pacific on, on September 30th. Or in the case of Daniel, he's going to be getting it at 7 a.m. in the morning. But still, though, point of the matter is the event is going to be taking place live in the United States and in some places around the world on Fight TV and the Fight.TV app for 20 bucks. Or 30 bucks if you're getting it through the bundle. But still, though, point of the matter is you're going to be witnessing some superior rule set action inside the cage. Now, Daniel, before we talk about this Rising Landmark 6 card, what were your quick thoughts about Rising 44? Mm, I would say it was an okay show. Uh, very mm, good uh, beginning. The first uh, four bouts were uh, <clears throat> very good. On a high level, or there were <clears throat> it was uh, very fast, like a uh, heavyweight uh, only the only heavyweight uh, match on the cards, uh, Shibisa against Chukash, uh, ended by a heel hook. And uh, I'm very glad that it's uh, ended 
in uh, by the submission and in ended very quickly because uh, I haven't uh, expected uh, much more from this fight and uh, that's really good that uh, Shoma scored another uh, finish uh, and then we had uh, uh, the two um, fights that it, it, that were that uh, they were bo that it was boring. Uh, Majima against Yokoyama. I can right now uh, read from Wikipedia that uh, Majima uh, missed the weight very, in a very minimal way uh, because it's just uh, 200 grams. Uh, but still, uh, I didn't. I did not know about it to be honest. Uh, and then we had uh, Yoshiki Nakahara against Riku to Dark Shirakawa, which was um, the major disappointment in my opinion because uh, I, I have ex we've expected with Jan Niewinski, with my uh, sparring verbal sparring partner from the Polish podcast about Rising. Uh, we, we we have a, we've expected uh, fireworks and we uh, we received you know nothing almost. Um, Ruki Anto against uh, Shopatriku Sami was kind of goofy thing. Uh, you know, uh, it was uh, Usami's uh, kickboxing debut against much uh, more skilled opponents, so uh, we could expect uh, that uh, that whole clinch work. We 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 uh, should also remember that he's from uh, he's from boxing partially, uh, and uh, he know how to and when to catch the clinch. And after the intermission, we had a very good, uh, in my opinion, uh, bout uh, Hori against Carlisle. But uh, some people would uh, would complain about uh, this fight. Uh, and uh, then high risk fight between Ju uh, Juntaro Ushiko and Kyohei Hagiwara. I, I would I am saying this uh, once again. It was high risk fight. It was depending uh, on. How Hagiwara will defend uh, takedowns of Ushiku uh, from the second round? He wasn't able to defend it uh, in, in an effective way, so it turned to be a kind of boring fight, at least the last ten minutes. Uh, and Masanori Kanehara against uh, Kleber, it was really great scrap and kind of unexpected, uh, especially the way how. Kanahara dominated, uh, was dominating uh, Kleber on the ground. So uh, it was not that bad uh, 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 as you could think about it, but uh, not the greatest, uh, no, not the greatest show this year. But remember, actually every show of 2023 delivers. Um, you, you can. You can um, uh, complain on last landmark that uh, two main fights uh, did not deliver. Okay, the, uh, that, that's a fair point. But all the the rest of the card were great. Uh, was great. But uh, actually, the, that forty four show was okay. But in my opinion, it's one of the weakest this year. But we have to uh, we have keep, keep to keep in mind that the bar is set very high. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we, we've been spoiled. The, the fighters are getting more and more acclimated to the superior rule set and throwing more and more. It's just on 44, they, they just, it didn't seem like, like they were, it just didn't seem like they knew the assignment. You know what I mean? And the assignment is the superior rule set. And, but this time on landmark six, we got 16 bouts, only two of them were kick. So that means we got 14 superior rule set bouts. And I, I'm, I'm really excited. And, and if you remember, this is the sixth cage event for them. And mm -hmm. and if you remember, and, and uh, the previous five cage events, two of them were event of the year candidates. I'm talking about, of course, the first trigger event. Everybody, every, undeniable that that one was an event of the year candidate. And I also thought Landmark 4 what was an event of the year candidate as well. Just But that trigger first event, that, that one was definitely an event of the year candidate. So there's something about the superior rule set in the cage when, when pride rules are allowed in the cage, it just something about it brings the action out. And we got 14 of them, 14 bouts here. And I, I, I feel like it's really going to bring the action. I, I'm eager anticipating this. I can't wait to see if it proves my theory that more fights will, will deliver. And, and, you know, and the reason that 44 
wasn't as good is because it just had lesser fights. You know, I mean, not lesser, but the less amount of fights. So I'm, I'm really excited uh, to see how this how it goes. I would say, uh, actually, uh, one thing about the number of fights. Right now we have uh, 16. Uh, we said it um, outside the, the, the record, but uh, we still don't have a fight order. So we don't know if that uh, weird, you know, showcase uh, of Sakakibara calling uh, to Koji to match him up with <laughs> Kaya Sakura is, is real. I I I still um, I am I'm still not sure if it was real or not and uh, but as I said before we don't still we still don't have an official order and we don't know if something will be in and if we and if it will be 17 fights uh, if there will be 17 fights it will tie I mean as, as think a, of it, I can mm -hmm. say this when it comes down to a fight card having that many fights and it's not like a big New Year's Eve mega event, I think it's just too much. Especially considering the fact that, you know, when it comes down to these certain cards, especially for Ryzen, they run up toward the five, six, sometimes seven or eight hour mark. We don't want to be staying up halfway through the night and into the next morning trying to, you know, be intermission coon, so to speak, just to try and stay up and watch all these damn fights. They need to, I mean, I think I kind of liked what they did with the last numbered show, how they had 10 fights on the card. But I think they need to, you know, stick with a limit. You know, nobody wants to stay up. I mean, just like this podcast, so to speak, how we ran toward the over three hour mark last time out. <laughs> you know, we shouldn't be forcing people. No, they shouldn't be forcing people to stay up and watch the damn fight card thinking, oh, it's going to be a exciting fight when it's really just decisions and it's wasting everybody's time, you know? I don't think that's uh, going to happen this time, though, Jay Krish. I think it's going to be action packed. If you remember from the previous landmarks and trigger events, the pacing is lightning fast. I mean, they, they don't even give you, but once one fight ends, it don't matter if it's a first round finish or a three round decision. Once that fight ends, they are immediately on to the next one, and it is and like yeah, light. I, like I mean, I like that about the pacing of the fights. It's just the fact that you know they would tend to go like around five or six, maybe seven fights without an intermission. Like, come yeah, on, that, that's what we're gonna do now. That's what they're going to do now. They're going to go about, you know, probably about like around about 10 or so fights and then do an intermission and then have the rest of the fights for, for the main card, basically. And I'm sure they'll bring they'll, uh, they'll release the bout order, you know, tonight or tomorrow or something. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm not worried about that. So and, and and, you know, the UFC cards, look at how many bouts are on there. Bellator just had a 20 bout event. That was that was really it, it won the weekend. It even beat Ryzen 44. I couldn't believe it. But that was because 44 didn't have enough uh, spear rules to the action. But still, though, the the, the more the more fights, I, I I just feel like it leads to a better card. We're gonna find out on this landmark six event if that's true. And and you know we 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 were discussing about the bout limits on uh, in the Ryzen Discord, and we came with the sweet spot is around about 15 fights. I, I think it should be 15 fights minimum. Some people say it should be 15 fights maximum. But I mean, I, I think that 15 fight bout number is right around the sweet spot, and, and just don't put no more than uh, two to three kickboxing mounts on, on on a 15 fight card. You okay, know, as yeah. many superior rules as possible. I can uh, make you a little trivia. You can guess two longest uh, rising events in the in the history of the company. Like like uh, fight time wise, or uh, like how no, many? No, 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 just. Uh, num number of uh, fights uh, wise. Oh gosh, that's a that's a tough one. Uh, I'm guessing two, was was one of the landmarks. What was, was one of the cage events? Did, what, would that have the many most bouts? No. Okay. No. Son of a gun. Was it uh, Ryzen twenty? Was that one of them? No New no? Year's Eve. Uh, no New Year's Eve here. It's it's really a, it's kind of, yes. Wow. So which one was it then? 
Uh, oh, wait, wait, Jay, Jay Chris got a guess. Wait, Jay, Jay Chris got a guess. Sorry. Okay. okay. Jay Chris, go ahead, guess. Uh, I would say Ryzen 14, but then again, you can blame Mayweather for that one. Other than that, <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, oh, you so, want to so go ahead and give the answer there, Daniel? Okay, the answer is 17 fights. Uh, and it was in famous Ryzen 34, 34 in Osaka. And oh, very, nice. And very famous Ryzen 43 from Sapporo. Oh, nice. And that was just okay. about a couple, that was just about a few months ago, wasn't it? it yeah, was. and, and that was a banger event too. That was a good one. 43 was, was a fantastic one. So... Until, until the last Osaka show, uh, not the last, the, the 33, the 34. Uh, the highest uh, <clears throat> number of bouts was sixteen, and it was couple of uh, couple of events. But the first that long was in two thousand seventeen in uh, Fukuoka. Uh, but the new record is uh, seventeen right now. Nice, nice. And, and how many kickboxing bouts were on oh. that uh, forty three card? That does it say? I have to I have to check it. But I oh, okay. Uh, don't don't you trip. I think there was like two or three. I, I I can't remember right now. I have to look it up myself. But I think uh, on, that's right around the sweet spot. So around about fifteen, you know, give or take a couple bouts. I, I think that that that's fine, in, and, and no more in, than two or three kickboxing bouts. You know, Jay, in in uh, uh, in Sapporo, there was uh, about one, two, four. Three or uh, three or four uh, kickboxing bouts, uh, and in uh, in in Osaka it was the similar number. Oh, okay, yeah, so, so that's right around. I think that's that's actually the a, a great number. You know, uh, seventeen bouts, only two or three okay. or three or four kickboxing. I think that's that's perfect. We get at least okay. fourteen. Uh, much more far bouts. I, I have official da data uh, in Sapporo. 12 MMA bouts with uh, five uh, kickboxing. Oh, okay. That, and, that's... Uh, and as as far as I remember, it was 55, something like 50 50 in Osaka. Yes, nine MMA and eight kickboxing. Oh, okay. See, that that's that may see this now. This one, Landmark Six, potentially is going to be this. It, let's have the, the most mixed martial arts bouts because it's got 14 now. So mm. I wonder if that's that, that that's a record. I, I don't know. I have to look it up oh, and see. Th uh, th this is this is the the, the thing to uh, to just check. But I don't think uh, it, 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 we should do it uh, right now. But yeah, yes, yeah no, maybe, not, not right yes, now. maybe yes, yeah. Yeah, it, it's just it's just fun to, to think about. And you know what? Well, how about this? How about we have the answers on the review show next week when we review both uh, oh, forty four yeah. and Landmark six? Okay. Yeah. Right, cool. Sure. For sure. We we can cool. check it and and uh, talk about it uh, next time. Uh, but what I wanted to say right now is sixteen uh, fights, and uh, it's a potential to be seventeen. I'm not a big fan of uh, you know just making card bigger and bigger, especially last uh, with the last minutes uh, moves. But we will see. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't wait to see if, if it pays off and the more fights correlate to more action and, and oh, prove that theory. Okay. So uh, one, one more one more question, the shortest uh, rising card. This is the this is kind of easy. Oh, it's 44, uh, wasn't it? Was 44 the shortest? No? Was it a landmark show before they went to the cage? Oh, yeah, the original landmarks. That's right. It's only like four the fights. The the the, fir the first one the the two landmark two and uh, three had uh, five uh, from what I remember the 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 very first one with 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 Imanari uh, and Mikuru uh, had uh, uh, right one, right four right fights. because that one had four fights on the card didn't it yes 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 and and it was uh, available only via Unext live. Yeah, so unfortunately, folks over here in the U.S. or folks over in Europe or you're based out of couldn't see it and probably will never get the chance to see it. Uh, no, they, they, maybe they released it on YouTube. They, yes. they, yeah, they released it on YouTube before one of the newer landmarks, remember? Oh, right, 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 yes. right, right. Uh, but 
the Ryzen portion from Bellator Japan, uh, Bellator 237, it, it isn't available anywhere. Yeah, yeah, the, the Bellator yeah, prelims the for the Bellator Japan. I mean, uh, sorry, not prelims, the post limbs, excuse me, sorry. And you know yeah. what, that, Chief to the Junk, a, a, a very a good friend of the show, he thinks that that was like the, the, the pilot episode for the Ryzen in the cage and, and allow the superior rule set strikes in the cage. And since that one delivered, then we started getting like, you know, trigger and now landmark. And and, and so because I remember the, the main event of that was uh, Yachi soccer With kicking Yusaka. somebody. Yeah. Yusaka. Yeah. Oh, well, OK. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he won by soccer kick. Yes, so so yes. that that was like, you know, and it cherried the event, basically. And so it put the cherry on top of the event, basically. So that's why we got when Teeps theorizes that that's why. They transitioned to do also cage events like Trigger and now Landmark because the the, yeah. the quote unquote pilot went so well. Uh, if I would be here, I, I would be uh, kind uh, kind of massively uh, disappointed because it was hard to to catch live. But uh, fortunately, I was uh, at the arena and I was oh, recording yeah. the the highlights from the uh, from the screens and was uploading it uh, on YouTube. So I was very lucky, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th thank goodness for you, Daniel. Otherwise, we would have never got to see it. I mean, I, I don't even do they even release that stuff on YouTube later? I don't even know. Some rips were uh, from some fights uh, were on daily motion, but it's uh, not available anymore. Uh, I remember that uh, I uh, with uh, Kana Sakura uh, was available. Yachi was available and maybe one uh, more fight uh, was uh, was uh, uploaded. And now, now they're not available. I wonder if they're even available with the Bellator on like Paramount and stuff. But they were post limbs, they're so who, who not knows? because they didn't show the post limbs at all. Yeah. They didn't care for the post limbs at all outside of letting Ryzen borrow the cage. Yeah, and, and you know, and it paid off really well because it, after that they did you know started the trigger first event, which is the first cage event, and that was an event of the year. That that was a clear event of the year. It had a sensational action on that. I mean, and just, I mean, that that was to me, that was so far, that's the best rising show to date, in my opinion. Oh, and it was a cage okay. event. Okay, right right now, I can tell you what was uploaded two uh, women fights uh, Kanna Sakura against Jamie Hinshaw, Andy Nguyen against Ai, uh, and uh, Yachi against Wesako. Oh, nice. Yeah, they, they got to have that Yachi bout on there because it ended in a soccer kick KO. And that's just like, the, that was the catalyst to them getting in the cage. And, I, I'm just ha I love it that they're in the cage now, uh, that they're doing regular cage events. We, we get not only this Landmark 6 event, next month, November, we get the first international Ryzen event, and it's going to be in the cage as well. It's going to be Landmark 7 in Azerbaijan. I'm really excited for that one as well. I mean, that's got big-name guys from Bellator fighters, Tofik Musayev. It's got uh, Chihiro Suzuki taking on uh, Vuga Karimov for the title. And there's a bunch of other fighters that have been announced too, international fighters. I, I'm man, I can't wait for that. I hope they put at least 15 bouts on that one too, as well. So I mean, yeah, but here's the thing though. It's gonna start a lot. Well, I wouldn't say a lot later here in the United States, because for us it's gonna start bright and early at 7 a.m. Eastern, 4 a.m. Pacific on November 4th, which is the day before my 31st birthday. But nice. it's going to be late <laughs> afternoon. Yeah, nice indeed. But for Daniel, it's going to air. I mean, basically for him, it's going to feel like a soccer game because he'll be able to watch it in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, I will be at the arena. So uh, but you, you you mean the, the, Azerba nice. the, the Azerbaijan uh, yes. event? Or, oh, oh, yeah. So, uh, the Azerbaijan uh, event. Which oh, in yeah. Poland, I think it'll start at around, if I'm not mistaken, around 4 p.m. your time in Poland. But you would be mm. at the venue, so, you know, you know time this difference is, may vary. This is a three-hour time difference, uh, so uh, I'm not sure how it will be like, but uh, I will be there, so uh, no... No difference for me, actually. I, I will have to just check the local time. Mm, there's uh, three hours uh, of flight from Poland uh, to Azerbaijan, so it's very comfortable for me. Nice. Nice. I yeah, can't. I hope it was a great show for you, Daniel. I can't wait to see how that goes. Yeah, but, I think that... that, 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 I, I, that I, I, 
I will make some vlog and uh, with with some subtitles. So so definitely there will be something. Nice. That'll be cool. Nice. That'll that. be cool, Daniel. But in the interest of time, let's go ahead and get going with this Ryzen Landmark Six card. And in order of what's on top and what's at the bottom, you know, I would say, do, do we want to talk about these fights in clusters or what have you? But let's go ahead and start from the top. Even though we know this fight ain't going to be the main event, the human octopus <laughs> Hideo Tokoro versus Alan Yoshihiro Hiro Yamaniha. A little quick synopsis on the record. Tokoro 35, 32, and 2 from Ibergawa, Gifu, Japan, 46 years young, 5'7, 133.8 pounds, been everywhere, tapped out just about everybody. His opponent, Alan Yoshihiro Hiro Yamaniha. 2010 and four, one time UFC late notice signee who got cut. 37 years of age, 5'534 and a half pounds with 61 with a 66.1 inch reach. Fighting out of Nagoya, Aichi, Japan. So he's going to be repping his home prefecture, his hometown, so to speak, by way of Sao Paulo, Brazil, representing Bonsai Jiu Jitsu with the De Souza brothers and Hideki Shirt Sakine. By way of TS Gym. Tokoro represents Reversal Gym Musashi Kosugi Tokoro Plus. Damn, that's a long name. But still, though, <laughs> point of the matter is you got the MMA legend in Little Volcan, aka Tokoro, versus Yamaniha, who, because of the fact that he's represented by the Souza brothers, has been getting kind of a push. Who you got in this fight? Uh, no, I, I think I'm oh, okay, go ahead, okay. go ahead, Daniel. Go, on. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Jay. Okay, well, I was just I'm rooting for Tokoro, of course, you know, the legend here, but I mean Yamaniha, he's uh he's not bad either. So I mean I guess it could go either way. It just depends on I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping for Tokoro, but I don't know, my, my, my heart says Tokoro, my head says Yamaniha, basically. You know, I I'm just wondering all the time what can happen in this fight and if uh, the fight will be, um, it will look like this that uh, Tokoro will, will maintain the action on the on feet. Uh, he is much better striker than than Yamanich, but Yamanicha should be uh, stronger physically, uh, and he can uh, take the uh, the fight to the ground. But from the other hand, uh, Tokoro is a crazy grappler. He he is he, he's I can't tell you uh, I, uh, about any uh, boring fight of uh, Tokoro in his long career. I, I, I've seen many of them. Many. And I can't remember an, a single boring fight for, uh, by uh, Tokoro. He always uh, trying to uh, do something. He's bringing a lot of action to the cage or, or, or the ring. Or he's, uh, he, he got knocked out very very quickly, like, like with uh, Kyoji. Uh, of course, but even if uh, he is a weaker physically, he's he's a uh, heavy underdog. He always trying to um, put some action. Uh, it's, he's trying to uh, find a way to submit his uh, opponent uh, from from his back, even when he's on on his back. Uh, do you remember the the fight with Shinobu Ota? I know that uh, Ota uh, was was a was a uh, very fresh in MMA, but uh, he had uh, great uh, wrestling experience, uh, the physical uh, advantage, and he couldn't win with Tokoro. Tokoro uh, submit him, uh, submitted him, uh, from what I uh, remember. And uh, if this fight will go to the ground, Tokoro is uh, isn't without any chances, even if he will be on his back uh, and Yamaniha will be in the dominant position because we there's there there there's always chance of uh, finishing technique. Hmm. Indeed, I mean I think when it comes down to this particular fight, and what I forgot to mention, but I'm not even going to be bothered going into detail on the records. You could tell that Tokoro has pretty much fought a legitimate who's who uh, fighters on his record and pretty much tapped them all out. It's just the fact that when it comes down to 
you know, comparing records, comparing legacies, Tokoro is definitely the favorite in this fight, especially considering his submission prowess. You know what I mean? The, the definitely yeah, there, I, the, the, there okay I will just finish there won't be a, a replay from from uh last uh, event from uh, Majima's uh, fight when where we had uh, two grapplers and the fight was like a wrestle fest that's that's all mm -hmm. so you think that it's yeah, not yeah, going to be more action wrestle fest. I mean you think it's not going to be a wrestle fest it's going to end in submission May end uh, by the submission for sure. Uh, to be honest, uh, Yamanika can try to out wrestle Tokor, but uh, if even even if he will try to do this, uh, there won't be an easy task for him uh, because I Tokor see. is like a, you know fish uh, that you went uh, by your hands uh, from from the water. And he is so you know you know what I'm saying. He's <laughs> very slippery. Un un slippery. Yeah, slippery. <laughs> uh, in inconvenient to to just uh, put him on the on one in one place. Yeah, very well said. All right, great. So so let's go to the next one now. Let's keep it rolling yeah. since we're on a time constraint here. So the next one on, yeah, on let's, let's just go, go straight from top down. The next one's yeah, Yuki Ito versus Pop. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about this next fight. Yuki Ito versus a name that we haven't heard from in quite some time in Ryzen. He used to go by Tanang Saklek Top Noi Tiger Muay Thai, but he now goes by Top Noi Kiram Lucky Left. First of all, Yuki <laughs> Ito, the particulars on him, 5'7", 126.1 pounds, 26 years of age. He has a 14-5 and 5 MMA record, representing next, NEX Ichi Muay fighting out of Ichinomiya Aichi, Japan. His opponent, obviously, needing no introduction the world over, but we're going to give him one anyways, Tapnoi Kiram Lucky Left, formerly Tanong Saklet Tapnoi Tiger Muay Thai, 5'7", 126 pounds, 31 years of age with a 67-inch reach, fighting out of Bang Tao Muay Thai and MMA, hailing from Phuket, Thailand, he is a three shit. He's a three fight veteran of the road to UFC tournament, a four fight veteran of the almighty full metal dojo. And of course, <laughs> we'll be fighting in Ryzen for the first time since June 2nd, 2019, when he lost via unanimous decision to Yusaku Nakamura. He also has a loss to Kaya Sakura on his record as well. So when it comes down to all of that, that I just mentioned. Also, just to mention, Kiram is nine and five. Ito is fourteen and five. I think the topology nerds are gonna probably say that Ito has the better advantage. And yes, they do. Seventy five percent to top noise, twenty five percent. But who do y'all got? I mean, will we see Top Noy have an elaborate knockout to go with his elaborate entrance back into the rising competition surface? Possibly, possibly. I mean, it depends on if he knows the assignment or not. Is he going to take advantage of the superior rule set when he gets Ito in precarious positions? Is he going to drop some ground at knees, throw some soccer kicks and stuff? That's what it depends on. If he can score that awesome knockout, I, I think Ito is going to win here. I mean, he just seems like he's got, he's fourteen and five, and and uh, you know this also. I want to make sure to point. This is a flyweight bout. Remember, they're building mm -hmm. a flyweight division, and uh, on also Sakaki Barasan tweeted out that at 44, Kyoji Horaguchi was there. And he was talking about having Ho Kyoji Horaguchi on uh, the New Year's Eve event. And, of course, that's going to be against uh, uh, Shinryu. John Dodd. So, yeah. For, 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 oh, that that could be another. See, well, I, I would have liked to have them have a Grand Prix. You know, and they, this is, is this the first year they, they haven't ever had a Grand Prix? I mean, of course, knowing you, you definitely want a Grand Prix to happen, especially considering that we got Kyoji, we got Makoto Shinryu Takahashi, we got John Dodson, and we got Ramzan Timurov, who pretty much provided the knockout of the night last weekend. I mean, shit, do y'all think that there should be a Grand Prix when it comes down to this flyweight division? I mean, 
Let's just Absolutely. say if Top Noy gets, I mean, let's yeah. just say if Top Noy gets the win here against Yuki Ito, could he be a future contender? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I mean, and and, and, and I want to know, is this the first year where they haven't had a Grand Prix? And, and if they don't, maybe they should I have a one night so. Grand Prix. It, it is, I mean, right? So maybe they have 20, Outside of 2020, and excuse me, even though I am interrupting, but outside of like 2020 and I think like 2018, there has only been like a couple of instances in the eight-year history of the Rise and Fighting Federation that there hasn't been a Grand Prix to close out or start up a year. Okay, so we should continue. We should uh, have a have a one night Grand Prix on New Year's then. If there's not going to be any Grand Prix qualifiers on the uh, the Azerbaijan card, then just have a one night Grand Prix on New Year's and, and making the flyweight division build another contender. Have uh, Kyoji versus Shinryu for the title as you know one of the main events or co main events, and then have a one night Grand Prix for a contenders. Have with John Dots and all the guys you mentioned, Jay Krish. I think that'd be sensational. So mm -hmm. th that's, but that's here's the hint, what... though. Here's the hint. I don't think it would be wise for John Dotson to take up another fight because he has a fight coming up. But no, it's, what, it's it's in bare knuckle though. It's not. He 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 moonlights in bare knuckle, and and I I don't see why unless he gets his face uh, cut up or breaks his hand or something, then I don't see why not. I mean, it's there's plenty of time between now and New Year's Eve, so I I think that they should definitely look into that and definitely have dots to be a part of it i mean the guy is is to my uh, opinion he's no, the number one contender for you know to face uh kyoji and, and shinryu the, the winner of that also we have to consider that bellator as well they have some flyweight guys as well like you know they're they're gonna do patchy mix versus sergio pettis if mix beats pettis i believe that pettis is gonna drop down to flyweight and he'd be an instant contender right there for Kyoji. So we, we just got to see what happens with the future here. But I think, I definitely think if, you know, they're going to do a Grand Prix or, and, and not have a year with no Grand Prix, they should do a one night Grand Prix on New Year's in flyweight division. And that's why one of these bouts is really intriguing. All these flyweight bouts are, to be honest with you. If you okay, uh, Daniel, if you, what are your thoughts about this? About the fight, uh, I, uh, you know, um, Top Noi is typical striker and uh, every of his every his opponent wants to um, use this fact, and uh, if uh, Topno is losing his fights, he is losing usually on the ground. Uh, but I'm not sure how Yuki Ito will uh, what 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 will be the Yuki's uh, Yuki Ito's uh, attitude uh, to this fight. If he will try to uh, just uh, keep this fight. Uh, on a stand-up uh, position uh, for uh, for some time uh, to the to just to the to um, first takedown, or he will try to use his range because he's kind of tall for a for a flyweight. Uh, I have to check uh, what's his what's his uh, height. It's uh, one hundred sixty nine centimeters, and the top noise. It's 165, so just a four four centimeters, but but still, uh, he's an 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 entertaining fighter. I uh, I'm speaking about Ito. He has a good take on defense, but I'm not sure if it uh, would be if it will be necessary to use it uh, in this fight. But if someone will shoot the takedown in this fight, it will be Ito. Uh, and what I wanted to say more <clears throat> about the potential Grand Prix, if you will see the the um, fighters from from rising flyweight, you can uh, do um, very strong lineup for the for an eight uh, men uh, tourney for foreigners and uh, for Japanese uh, foreigners are uh, Bontorin, uh, Dotson, uh, Topnoi. Uh, and uh, Temirov, and right now it uh, it it it. But I think there is even a potential for a sixteen uh, men tournament. But this is just a, you know expect our expectations, not not even uh, predictions. So uh, hey, take we, my we, money, Daniel. P take my money for that sixteen I, man. I, 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 would, <laughs> I would love to see it. 
Okay, <laughs> yes. th th that's my statement. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, Take my freaking you're money, saying, Tommy Bar. You're saying <laughs> a 16-man tournament. Do you think that would rival any Grand Prix that K1 would put on? Oh, yeah. I mean, come to oh, think yeah, of it, absolutely. You, got some, you, you got a bunch of lighter weight guys, Dotson included, looking to just slug and throw down. I mean, do you think that any of that shit can go down in one night or over several events? No, absolutely. several events, definitely. It, yeah, it, no, it, I, it, it, could, it could be both. It could be, you know, they could have some uh, qualifiers on on Azerbaijan event. They could have a, you know, do a, even a four-man one night tournament on, on New Year's Eve. It, it wouldn't matter. They're flyweights. They got endless gas tanks. They, they I mean, it's, it, it'd be... If they can even do a 16 man one night, just like Glory did with, with Dream. Remember that back in the day in like 09 or something like that? Glory did a 16 man Glory, one night tournament. Glory did it, but Glory uh, had a two minute uh, rounds for the for the whole tournament. Oh, okay. And yeah, well, Glory's been can... around since 2012, dude. Oh, it was after 2012? Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know. In terms of flyweight Grand Prix, I would be up on what they have, uh, what they've did, uh, what uh, in uh, 2017 with uh, bantamweight Grand Prix, uh, opening round, final eight, and then the fi uh, the uh, the finals. Maybe yeah. uh, one night, maybe split uh, split it into into the two events. I, I'm not sure, but just you know. Our uh, our expectations. So uh, that's that's all. One thing, one very important thing about the start time. It uh, mm -hmm. the mm, the mm, show uh, actually starts at uh, at uh, noon um, Japanese time because there are openings. Uh, I think it will be the three fights. Uh, and uh, the it will be at at the at, at noon so two two hours earlier than 44 okay that noon uh, in Japanese time is yes, 8 yes. p.m 8 p.m Pacific 11 p.m Eastern time on so fight TV. Basically, <laughs> no, so basically you're gonna have in this case, and we'll get to the rest of the card momentarily, but in this case, you're going to probably have some fights stream live on YouTube through the Ryzen and Abima YouTube channels. Yeah, Because I, so. I don't know if Fight TV would want to do anything that would risk Ryzen getting any low ratings because guess what? You got a big-time boxing event between Canelo and Jamel Charlo taking place at the same exact time in Las Vegas. Yeah, well, I mean, while the first couple of fights are going, that that's that's when Canelo and Charlo is going to be finishing up. What right right as the first couple of fights uh, for Ryzen are happening. Yeah, but not, not if the ring walk time for that Canelo Charlo fight is around ten thirty or eleven p.m. my time. Oh, that that would be uh, eight or or nine p.m. I, I don't think it's going to be that late because remember they they're also they have to take care of the Eastern time zone as well, and, and to have a, a midnight walkout time for Canelo, I don't I don't think they do that. I, I seriously would think it would be sooner than that yeah, for, for for the Eastern for, time zones. For me, it will be five a.m. Uh, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> very very early, or I I won't go I won't go to sleep if I will. Uh, decide to watch uh, Fight Circus live. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you know what? That's also a reminder because, you know, Fight Circus is going to be taking place this weekend as well. But guess what? It's a free purview. People can watch that as they please. Hell, I think I'm going to probably watch that fight on Sunday, like right after all the football games wrap. Well, right after the afternoon football games wrap up. I'm not going to watch Sunday Night Football I might watch Fight Circus. <laughs> well, yes. it's, it's free. That's 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 good. But to, I mean, the one to watch is Landmark Six because that's superior rule set in the cage, and in we I was, as we've seen from the history of that happening, that produces sensational action. We've only had five or six events. Two of them have been Event of the Year candidates. Could this be another one? Could, I mean, mm -hmm. we're we're about to find out, and I, I'm I hope they air at least. 
three on YouTube again. I, I like that they did that for 44. Well, they do that again here. They can even do go more, and I'd be happy. I just think that there's going to be some I, – I just feel like, you know, especially if they let these guys know the assignment and tell them, hey, we want – you got, you got to know the assignment. We want to see superior rules set action. And just let them know. You, you get a takedown, we want 12 to 6 elbows. You, you stuff a takedown, we want grounded knees. You know what I mean? You get a knockdown, we want flying stomps or a soccer kick. You know what I mean? And if you're on your back, remember Anderson Silva Okami, that up kick knockout, or uh, uh, Musazi versus Jacare? Those kind of up, we want up kick knockouts. You know, so just send in the assignment and then have, a, you know, three or four of them free on YouTube. And I, I think it's going to be fantastic. I think it's, man, I, I can't wait, you guys. I really can't wait. So. But okay, yeah, yeah, I can't off wait either. Let's, let's let's get on the next bout wait. then. Yeah, I can't wait either when it comes down to this fight card. But the one fight that I am not looking forward to, and we can also talk about <laughs> his twin brother as well, is this fight. And that's Taka Kenshin or Satoshi Kamiyama for those who are interested in actual names behind these fighters versus <laughs> the Kaiju killer. The full metal dojo alum, he did talk a Arapo. Just for particular sake, Taka Kenshin, 6'3, 277 inch reach, 26 years young, born on the same day as his twin brother, Suyoshi Sudario, May 13th, 1997, fighting out of Oyama Toshigi, Japan. He, unfortunately for him, is 0 and 2. Both of those losses, well, actually, both of those losses come by way of TKO. Soccer kick loss to Hideki Shrek Tsukine last April, and a TKO loss to the juggernaut Kaliu Gilbrain de Oliveira back on November 6th of 2022. His most recent fight in any form of combat was a win over Jimmy the Titan Ambrose. You remember that name more than we do, Jay. <laughs> in Ganryu Jima and Oki Bombaye back on December 28th. Yeah, I love that gun right. That's that's the moat fights for, for people that don't know. Ganryu Jima is the moat fighting organization. Uh-huh. His opponent in this fight has a hell of a lot of experience compared to old Taka Kenshin. And that is 9 and 0 Kaiju Killer Hidetaka Alato. 5'10. Mm, let's just say he weighs in around the neighborhood of mm, 150 kilos or 330 pounds. Represent Paresto Osaka fighting out of Osaka, Japan. He is 9-0 and overall. Five of those nine wins, well, actually six of those nine wins by way of knockout. Most of them come by way of first round knockout. And need I mentioned before, he is a two-fight veteran of the almighty full metal dojo, the illest mother-loving dojo on the face of the planet. But still, though, I'm not even talking about this fight as a whole because we all know who's going to win this fight, and it's not Taka Kenshin, let's be real. But Taka Kenshin... <laughs> I don't know if it's lost in translation, and I sit, I share the photos in the chat that we are on right now, but I don't know if this is lost in translation, but he basically said to me, <laughs> you know, he basically retweeted or shared in his little Instagram story, Taka Kenshin, that, oh, Grandpa just tied me in something. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's because of the fact and I'm looking at it right now. He said, in translation, Grandpa has tagged me. I don't know how to do it. It's not a joke. I mean, <laughs> first of all, I'm 30, first of all, I'm 31 years old. Oh, well, actually, I'm going to be 31 by the end of this month. But still, though, <laughs> I'm 31 years old. I'm not a fucking grandpa by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> but I guess he okay, probably... That's something Gramps would say. That, that, that's something so, uh, Grandpa would say there, there Gramps, J. Chris Gramps. <laughs> yeah, of course. But the point of the matter is, and I think it's just because of this, he's probably distancing himself from his twin brother, Suyoshi, in this case. I know the Japanese 
love their storylines, but this is a storyline that just needs to come to an end quick. Like, they're too fucking old to be distant from each other. I mean, shit, they're 26 years old, respectively. They're twin brothers. They shouldn't be, you know, playing the distance game against one another unless they're actually fighting in different towns. They probably just don't like each other. I mean, that's that happens. That's very common with brothers. I mean, they fight and you know stuff. But it just, but they're they'll end of the end of the day they're brothers, so they just don't like each other. But you know, I disagree that Jay Chris, you this this is intriguing. You know why? Because Taka Kenshin is a sumo crossover, and sumo crossovers are pretty intriguing. I think, and I'm, I'm excited to see how he does against the, against the Kaiju Killer. I love that nickname. Kaiju, of course, is a, a Japanese for monster. Uh, you know, like that's what they call like Godzilla and stuff as a kaiju. Of course, uh, made famous in uh, uh, Pacific Rim. If you ever seen that movie, that was the the Jaegers were the big robots fighting against the kaiju, which was the monster. So I just I love that nickname, kaiju killer. And uh, but I'm, I'm really like I said, I'm really excited to see that. Even though I know he's 0 and 2, but he's still a sumo crossover. I, I just I just love that. It, it's it adds extra layer to it for me. So I'm I'm still looking forward to this event. I mean this this fight. Even though you know they don't have the best of records, but you know he's fighting a guy that's got a moat fight and full metal dojo veteran. So I mean, this is I, I'm excited for this one to be honest with you. I love it when the big boys throw down. Mm-hmm. Of course. And Daniel, do you have anything to say about my mishap with Taka Kenshin or about this fight in general, which ain't really much? Uh, one thing about uh, Taka Kenshin, I'm really looking forward to see a backstage uh, videos uh, from this event. <laughs> maybe maybe there will be some some backstage brawls uh, with his with his brother and his uh, and his team. Uh, right now, uh, probably uh, Topology is listing that uh, he has a member of or, or, of, or, of Paraestra Osaka uh, in uh, on the official site. He is a freelancer uh, right now. Uh, Wait he, a minute, you're talking about uh, Rakuto? Taka Kenshin. Taka Kenshin. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, what I wanted to to say, he, he started uh, his MMA trainings on, uh, in Alliance Square under TK Kosaka, but right now it, it, it he seems to be uh, done with him. Uh, in his first two fights, uh, he was okay. He looked good until he got gassed. Uh, after he got gassed, it was, you know, just, uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to, uh, how to say it. He, he, he just uh, disappeared uh, in the cage. Uh, it was the, the, it was definitely visible with uh, in that fight with uh, Shrek Sakina uh, and and, uh, and um, about uh, Arato. Uh, I saw his uh, first two fights. The fun fact: um, Topology is listing that he uh, his second fight was at the Full Metal Dojo 19, from what I remember. But in fact, it was the very very first. Fight Circus uh, show. <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> but uh, but to, uh, under a regular MMA rule set. Um, and uh, what was was the strong point of Arato? He's very durable. He can uh, take a lot of shots and uh, not to uh, not be knocked out or knocked down. Uh, he is a massive. He's like a, he 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 has some kind of drilling style. He's very strong on the ground, and first and foremost, he's adapted to the rule set because we have to remember that Full Metal Dojo using actually the Ryzen rule set. Uh, and uh, I could uh, and I can re recommend his uh, pro debut. Uh, it was uh, in uh, in in caged Full Metal Dojo. At the uh, at the cage, the full metal dojo event, and his opponent uh, was punching him uh, so hard in in the first round, but in the second round, he took his opponent down, and uh, just uh, landed a shitload of uh, of elbows and and uh, knees uh, on the ground. And he, from what I remember, uh, he finished his opponent 
uh, by the knees on the ground. So this is uh, this nice. is the v very important things that uh, everyone should know. Uh, I did not uh, see his fights in Gracan, uh, but uh, I don't uh, expect that he uh, evolved that much uh, since uh, his pro debut. But he had a lot of uh, fights in in Gracan. I mean, come to think of it, I can understand. Obviously, when it comes down to the Full Metal Dojo rule set, it's similar to the Ryzen rule set. It's similar to the Watori rule set over in your neck of the woods, where they basically use the Pride rule set. But I'm also surprised that the Kaiju Killer didn't smother somebody when it came down to one of his finish. When it came down to one of his finishes, the dude's 330 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> You want to pancake somebody, huh, J. Chris? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say I don't want somebody to get smothered like Emmanuel Yarborough smothering somebody. May he rest in peace. But yes. still, though, when it comes down to that, as big as he is, 5'10", 330, dude should probably be smothering somebody. Now, as far <laughs> as the fight that we're going to talk about next, the one that just got added, we can go ahead and talk about this as a mismatch. And Let's that do it, is yeah. To... That's his brother. Yeah. That's, that's Takakenshin's yeah. Taka Taka brother, Sudario. Yeah, Takakenshin's twin brother, Siyoshi Sudario, versus Don Quan Lim. Sudario, 6'3", 260, 76-inch reach, 26 years of age, fighting out of, well, fighting under the tutelage of Ensign Inoue, but not anymore, I guess. He uh, fight. What, what, what did you say? I mean, what did you say? He, he's, he's not under, it's not under to, in, in a way. Oh, I, uh, from, I tried from to what? speak to Instant in a way via the JMMA beat. Face, oh, yeah. I mean, in Instagram group chat, and Instant basically said, Oh, you know, dude, I don't really train. I don't really train Sidario anymore. I barely even look at him or something, something along the lines of that. Uh, I mean, because of course, Ensign lives in, I don't know, he lives in between Hawaii and Tokyo. Let's be real. But he doesn't uh, really train Suyoshi Sudario all that often. Still. Uh, hasn't Ensign uh, replied that uh, he's uh, training his uh, three times a week? I would think so. But still, though. Sidario, seven and two overall, six of his seven wins via knockout. Obviously, he's fought all nine of his fights in rising competition, be it the ring or the cage. And he is going to face off against a fight, and he, being another sumo crossover, by the way, is going to be facing off against an undersized South Korean middleweight named Dong Hwan Lim. Dong H W A N L I M. Finding out a dream, finding out a team strong wolf, uh, finding out a team strong wolf in Dianyanggu, South Korea. Six feet tall, two hundred pounds. So he's basically fighting in his walking weight for this fight. He should be at least twenty eight years young, five and six overall with three of well with two of his five fights ending, two of his five wins ending in the finish. He is five and five in Road FC with his most recent two fights being decision and knockout wins, respectively. The recent knockout win of the two was back at Road FC 63 on February 25th. So now that we all right. got all that out the way, and now that we know that this is just going to be another squash match for Suyoshi Sudario, I just got to ask. When do you start thinking about the fight between Sudario and Todd Duffy that was supposed to have happened? Because Duffy, as we heard, has visa issues. He's basically, I mean, he basically tried to get into the country last minute just to put this fight over, but should have done that weeks earlier. Yeah, so, there's no excuse you know, for not having a visa. You, you got to get that visa stuff. I mean, as soon as he signed the fight, it should have been take, going through the steps to get a visa. And not wait till the last minute. That's that was ridiculous. So I'm I'm kind of I don't care if that fight ever happens. You know, I mean, dude, you can't you can't be doing that and and 
all of a sudden make them put them in a situation where they have to scrounge up a last minute fighter because you can't get your visa taken care of in a timely manner. So that just, man, that, that, that annoys me more than a fighter missing weight, to be honest with you. So mm. I'm, I'm so I'm looking forward to this because Sudario is an, like you said, Jay Chris, he's, she's, he's another uh, sumo crossover fighter. And I, I love those. And then his, his, his opponent, like you said, is a, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a can crush because he's from Road FC. Road FC is a fantastic Korean promotion. They had some big boy bouts there as well. So, I mean, the guy mm. probably knows he knows how to fight. So, I, I don't know if it, I would classify it as a total can crush, but it's still probably going to, it still obviously favors Sudario because Kim's coming in late notice and stuff like that. But, I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And after this, I mean, Sudario, he, he should be. I think they should do some Bellator crossover fights. Bring over some of them Bellator heavyweights and have them fight Sudario because he wants to fight international guys. So I mean that I think it'd be perfect for like say a collaboration uh, of fight on on the New Year's Eve card. You know, if he comes out of this unscathed, throw him on the New Year's Eve card against the Bellator heavyweight. And let's I mean, have some it's fun. most likely he is going to come out this fight unscathed because again, you got a sumo wrestler facing off against an undersized Korean middleweight. I mean, of course it's going to be – I mean, of course he's going to come out on skate, but let's just say this for a matter of fact. Remember that fight between Melvin Manoff and Mark Hunt all the way back in 2008? Of course. Yes, great, great reference. I mean, I don't want to basically jinx it, but I think it might end up being something similar to that if Suyoshi Sudario is not careful or if he gets – little too full of his own shit but it's a bit different situation in my opinion because uh, we we all knew uh, in 2008 that melvin manuf has a ton is his in his hand uh and uh, we know we we all knew that he is a dangerous uh, in this fight uh I can see that right now that uh, Dong uh, won his last fight uh, by a first round punch knockout. Uh, maybe he had. Uh, I, I can uh, say that that I couldn't uh, check his fight fights, uh, but in this fight, Sudario has definitely. We know that he he has a knockout power. He shown that uh, a couple of times. Uh, he will be bigger. He will be stronger, definitely. But um, of course, he he has to be focused from the fir- from the first uh, second because uh, he 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 can be in trouble. But uh, it's it's basically you know just just the basics. Uh, do not over- underrate your opponent, uh, whoever he is. Uh, this is it uh, about the Todd Duffy fight. Uh, about Todd Duffy, I uh, wrote. Oh, sorry, I I read that uh, he lost his passport, and mm. he, he 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 got a staph uh, infection. Mm. So, oh, okay. So, so the staph infection the would, would make more sense, but just just losing your your visa that's. To me, that's inexcusable. That that should be taken care of way back when you first sign the fight. You should be because I mean the, the visa process, you know, it's, it's a process, right? And you should take care of that right away when he signs the fight. But if he had a staff infection, that's different. So I mean, that's that's as we saw from uh, uh, AJ McKee recently. He was supposed to be on a Rising collaboration bout. He had to pull out because of a uh, staff infection last minute. So that does happen. That and that's more forgivable because that is. An actual infection, and you know, but but the visa stuff. I'm sorry, you got to get that taken care of right away. If you once the bout is, you know, you know you're gonna fight, you sign the bout order right away. The next day, you gotta start taking care of that visa stuff. The, these visa issues are just inexcusable, in my opinion. So, of, co- of course, uh, if Sudario will win, uh, we will have a uh, easy work. We can't ex- exclude this, especially his opponent is a. Uh, a last minute replacement. Uh, we we may see him on New Year's Eve, uh, but I wouldn't uh, like to uh, bring uh, to 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 have a to 
I, I wouldn't like to rise in uh rising's attempt uh another attempt to bring in Todd Duffy. I think uh, if they will they will uh, co-promote with Bellator once again or uh, they can bring much better um, fight a much better fighter uh speaking about the athlete value and the name value. It it can be it, it can be better balanced because uh, right now Todd Duffy is only a, a name right now and I probably it would end up like uh, with uh, like the second uh, fight of uh, Sudario from what I remember that's uh, that's uh, with that pro wrestler from AJPW. So uh, uh, oh you mean Kazushi Miyamoto? Yes, this is this is that fight. So, so uh, maybe it's it, it's kind of better solution despite it it it's it not looking like that because because instead of actual heavyweight and experienced heavyweight we have pumped up uh, middleweight. But of course, Sudario is a favorite and uh, he has to just keep keep focus and and uh, make his make his job that's all i mean come to think of it considering that there's not that many heavyweights in rising in general let's just say in the end of this fight between sudario and don kion lim and if the kaiju killer comes out of this unscathed and this is going to be the last thought about this fight before we move on what if we could possibly see the Kaiju Killer face off against the Yochi Sudario on New hey, Year's I'm, Eve. I'm down for it. I, I, I'd be for it, and I'd love to see that big boy Kaiju Killer versus a sumo crossover. I mean, and 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 the the brother of the guy. If, if he beats Taka Kenshin, he, be, he beats the brother of Sudario. So there would be some, you know, like like legit bad blood there because he beat up his brother. You know, so it'd be it's added another element to that ballot. So I'm sure that that would definitely be fun for the future. But I, I, I'm a boy with Daniel. I think that they should do a Bellator crossover on New Year's Eve. There's plenty of guys in the Bellator top 10, especially the bottom half. That, that like, like, I mean, they're, well, I, you, you guys already know who I'm talking about probably, but there, there's, there's a bunch of guys that, that could easily you come over. Like and have a that, yeah, that's one of them for sure. That's the Tyrell Fortune is the one of them. He's a wrestler. It'd be great to see how you do against, you know, with grounded knees and stuff like that. There, there's, Russell. there's, yeah, well, he's he's a champion. I don't think they would have the the champion come over for for a uh, well. Hey, you never know. Actually, you never know. So it just uh, no, it just so Maybe it's it's too much. Okay, I, I I'm I'm just you know <laughs> joking <Yeah. laughs> uh, around, but no, 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 definitely not. Yeah. No. I mean, y'all want to go ahead and move on to the rest of the yeah, card. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, let's the, go. The next one is Toy Takeshi. Yeah, Kohei Takeshi versus Yusaku Inoue. Takeshi, the left way crossover, L E T E H W E I, for those of the uninhibited. That's the art of the nine limbs where you get to use your arms, your legs, your elbows, your knees, and your head as a weapon. But yeah, Kohei Takeshi, eight and ten in mixed martial arts, damn good at left way. 35 years young, 5'755 and a third pounds. Representing Crosspoint Kichiochi, fighting out of Okinawa, Japan. His opponent, Yusaku Inoue, 10-4-1, 34 years of age, 5'10", 155, and three-quarter pounds. 34 years old, representing Reversal Jim Kawaguchi Redips, Kawaguchi Saitama, by way of Tokyo, Japan. As far as this fight goes, everybody knows that Inoue is the favorite, but Tokeshi, let's just say, I mean, you think that a Rato is a weeble who wobbles and don't fall down. This dude will take a licking and keep on ticking. I mean, <laughs> especially considering the fact that he has he has that iron will from what he does in left way, he being Tokeshi. But I just gotta ask, who do y'all think is gonna win this fight? The left way fighter in Tokeshi or Yusaku in a way? Yeah, definitely rooting for Tokeshi. The, the, again, the heart says Tokeshi, but the head says that it's gonna be Inoue. Because Inoue is a great fighter as well, 10 and 4. I mean, 
So, and Takeshi, I, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. It depends on which man knows the assignment. Let's put it that way. And whoever knows the assignment better is probably going to put the other opponent in a precarious position where he can throw some sock kicks and grounded knees and stuff like that. That's that's probably who's going to win. So I we'll, mean, we'll just yeah, have to you see. You can basically that. say that because of the fact that, for in a way, this will be his rise and debut. He fought in Gunby Ujima before, Mo fighting. He fought in Shudo. He fought in that downed one championship for their Warrior Series. And he also fought rising alum Tom Santos in Pound Place and lost to him, by the way. But still, though, this will be his first professional MMA fight in a way. This is his first professional MMA fight in a little over five years. So do you hmm. think that cage rust for him in this case will play a factor? Possibly. Possibly, but maybe at the same time it won't. It just depends on the fighter and how well he's prepared. So, I mean, we'll we'll find out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And Daniel, what say you? I would like to say that uh, five years, it's a lot. Really uh, a lot. Uh, I saw some uh, Yusaku's uh, finishes, uh, and he looks like a very explosive fire. Um, with uh, one KO was uh, by a knee by uh, in a tight clinch, and the second one uh, was by the spinning bed fist or, or something like that. But uh, I know that uh, he's um, very um, comfortable with uh, doing some spinning uh, things uh, and and stuff like this. He he looked like a very uh, dynamic fighter uh, with uh, with some firepower. But once again. Five year of break, uh, so it it can be uh, decisive uh, in in uh, in this uh, in this case. Uh, we know Tokeshi very well. We know that uh, he he is always uh, down to down to brawl, uh, and uh, he also uh, he 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 also is able to to knock uh, his uh, opponent his every his his every opponent out. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the Tokeshi will be very mo motivated uh, to this uh, to this fight. Uh, he he won uh, at uh, knockout show this year in in Muay Thai or kickboxing. I, I don't remember the the, uh, the the rule set of that fight. Uh, and then he lost with veteran Luis Andrade Andras uh, in Brazilian uh, Portuguese uh, and. This is like uh, you know, Cointas. We don't know uh, what to expect uh, uh, from Yusaku in Norway. I know that he had some exhibition fight this year with Hideo Tokora, but who cares about exhibition fights? Uh, if it would, if, if uh, I, I've I've saw some uh, exhibition fights in K1 with Takeru, uh, for example, but it's uh, it's MMA. It's just a you know, just a. Jumping, jumping around in the cage, some, some, uh, some uh, sh grappling showcase, and and that's all. And I can tell you more. I mean, I can totally understand that. But if you look at Tokeshi, and yeah, his last actual win was a kickboxing win over Masato Bravely at Knockout Twenty Twenty Three Super Belt Blaze back on March Fourth. But his last Ryzen win was against a literal relative unknown in Harry Stallone back on, on February 23rd, 2022, which is almost a couple of years to the day of Ryzen's last event pre-pandemic at that time. But still, though, when you look at Tokeshi and you look at the fact that he's one and two in Ryzen, I know in Japan records don't really matter, but do you feel that you know, if he continues to win the same way he did against Harry Stallone, that we might see a potential lightweight contender? Mm, sure. I, don't think think so. I, mean, think about it. Hmm? I don't think so. It, you know, Co Kohei is uh, it's a guy who, who al always brings fun. Uh, he, his uh, his uh, fights uh, always ends by the finish. Uh, he he isn't a material for a for a title uh, title contender for sure. Uh, I'm sure in a one hundred percent. But this kind of fighters, 
uh, even his record record isn't uh, very impressive. Uh, but this kind of fighters are always needed because uh, you need you need some uh, fun factor uh, to your uh, to some violence to uh, you need some action uh, in uh, at the events. Uh, guys like Tokashi, like Uoi Full Swing, uh, <clears throat> like uh, Shoji. Uh, this uh, this is the same type uh, of a fighter which uh, who will always bringing action, no matter if he is uh, if he will lose or if if he will win. Uh, but it's not a material for a for a future uh, title uh, challenger. Hmm. I see, I see. So basically, what you're saying is, even with a win or a loss, it won't get Kohei Takeshi anywhere. Mm, he should uh, he should uh, to compete for a title he should uh, beat a guy like uh, I don't know Luis Gustavo Koji Takeda this this is the, the first tire of uh, Rising Lightweights uh, and uh, this would be the key uh, for that uh, potential uh, title fight agreed 100% okay. Daniel alright let's, let's move Other on to the next that, belt it's the only women's belt yeah, let's move on to the only women's battle on the card. Ayaka Watanabe versus Machi, of which she only goes by her singular name. She doesn't go by her full name, which is Machi Fukuda. Watanabe, 5'3", 112.9 pounds, 26 years of age, 3-1 and one as a professional mixed martial artist, with two of her three wins by way of knockout. She is all of 26 years of age, representing Perez Takashiwa, fighting out of Toyokawa, Aichi, Japan. Her opponent, six years younger, five feet tall, 115 pounds, Machi Fukuda, all of 20 years of age. They just grow up so damn fast. Representing... <laughs> Yeah, representing Sports Gym 67s. Don't worry, I'm not a perv. <laughs> but still, though, representing Sports Gym 67s, fighting out of Usunomiya Tochigi, Japan. She is 3 0 with two of her wins by way of submission. So, yeah, you could basically say this is a young girl battle at straw weight. And again, I, I'm not a perv. I'm not trying to be pervy by saying young girl battle. I'm just saying. These are two young fighters looking to make a way into the realm of the fight world, especially in Ryzen. Who do y'all think is going to win this particular fight? Uh, you know, I'm okay. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go on, go okay, on, okay, yeah. okay. Well, you know, Wantana Bay is three and one. Machi is three and zero, oh, so she's never tasted defeat. So I'm wondering. I'm just wondering if you know which well, one is older. Actually, never tasted defeat as a professional. She has. Oh, okay. As an okay. Then I, I'm. I'm gonna go with who. Which which one's older? Does it say which one's older here, real quick? I'm trying to find out. Watanabe is six years older than Mach. Okay. Then I'm gonna pick Watanabe because she's got the veteran experience. Oh, she's older. Probably got the you know a little bit stronger. But you never know. I mean, with, with those the younger fighters, they got that energy, they got that that you know that hunger inside them, and and she's gonna want to be keeping her. Oh, she doesn't want to get you know that first loss. So I'm I'm really looking forward to this one, seeing what the women can do. And you know, it's had a, a a straw weight division. That's that's another one that has been rumored to be being opened in Bellator as as well as uh, other promotions. I think even UFC. Is talking about a strawweight division, so it's really intriguing to see strawweight uh, fighting. The UFC already has a strawweight division. Oh, They've excuse had me. One for like the last eight years. Oh, sorry. I, they, they're thinking about opening an atomweight division, and so. But anyways, the it's it's really I intriguing hope that to see these. Happen, by the way, because the last thing that the UFC needs to take advantage of is another division where there's barely any talent on their end. Mm -hmm. Ryzen's got all the talent at Adam Waite. They got the best, Sikizawa, all them. They're 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 the yeah, top of level. And the UFC should not even think about getting another weight division on their portfolio that they can't take care of. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Yeah. Well, think about it. Anyway, so to answer your question, I'm gonna pick Wantanabe. She's got the she's got more experience, but older, and she's already uh you know tasted defeat once. So, you know, the, but you never know. Machi, I mean, 
She's going to be bringing it. She's younger. That energy she wants to keep that O. I'm, I'm really excited to see how this one plays out, to be honest with you. I, I want to see that, that, you know, the women have, have brought the action in Ryzen very well. You know, they, there's uh, um, Mizawa, one of the ways she won the title, there was grounded up kicks on Hamasaki. Remember that? Rocked her with some grounded yeah. up kicks and then finished her. So the women, they you know, they they can bring it on the superior rule set. So I'm looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. And Daniel, do you want to say something about this fight? Yes, of course. Uh, the main uh, <clears throat> point of attention in, in this fight is uh, Ayaka Watanabe because uh, originally she is from Aichi Prefecture. Uh, but right now she is uh, she is living in Tokyo and uh, and training in, a in AACC. Uh, she is a striker. Uh, she has a very impressive uh, KO uh, over uh, Mina Kurobe. Uh, she is very uh, well known from Rising. Uh, she knocked out uh, Mina by uh, right uppercut, uh, right counter uppercut. She's uh, actually she she is a striker, but she's a counter puncher. She's always uh, going backwards and uh, waiting for that uh, proper moment uh, to just count, to, to to just make a counter attack. Uh, and her opponent is totally different uh, fighter. And uh, I would like uh, and to say that it depends. Th this fight it depends uh, if Machi will be able to take her opponent down because Machi she has uh, has a uh, good wrestling skills. Uh, she is a good grappler, and most prop. And uh, I don't think. Uh, that uh, she will go uh, and uh, trying to and will try to uh, exchange the the shots uh, with with uh, Ayaka, uh, and this is the main factor uh, where the fight uh, will take uh, place. Uh, stand up, uh, Watanabe. Uh, the ground, Machi. Um, I was uh, writing with uh, Charlie Jewett, CJ, uh, from Sogokaku. Uh, and uh, he's, uh, he also uh, wrote that uh, both fighters can uh, easily drop uh, to the super atom weight. So no problems uh, if, with their potential uh, next potential fights in the lower uh, weight class. Nice. Nice. Excellent analysis. Uh, let's keep it rolling, guys. Since, since, we're, since we're, we're, we're on a time crunch a little bit, this next bout I'm really looking forward to. Jay Christian mm -hmm. and Jenny, you guys know exactly why. Because there's an international fighter in this one and a good, a uh, big yes. international signing. Of course. And that big international signing is Viktor Kolesnik, the former M1 Global title challenger and former Serbian battle championship featherweight champion. He will square off against Rio Takagi. First of all, the particulars on Kolesnik. He is originally from Serbia, fighting out of the Phuket top team. And, well, actually, no. Fighting out of Tiger Muay Thai in Bangkok, Thailand, by way of Krasnodar, Russia. 5'10", 144 and a quarter pounds, 27 years of age. His opponent, representing Paresta Hachioji, Hachioji, Tokyo, Japan, Ryo Takagi. Six. And one overall, 34 years of age, 5'10", 145. Now, as far as this fight is concerned, Kolesnik comes into this off the back of knocking out Atsushi Kichimoto at Ryzen 42 via calf kick. Well, actually, it wasn't really via knockout because he just kicked Kishimoto's legs out from underneath him with that calf kick. As far that's a, as that's a technical that, knockout. That's a TKO. Yeah, that is, yeah, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm not really all that versed on the rules. I just know a knockout when I see it. And in my case, a <laughs> knockout is where you fall flat on your fucking face. But still, though. You want him still, snoring though, for a knockout, me. right? <laughs> yes. Yes. But still, though, a knockout is a knockout. And Kolesnik took homeboy's legs out from underneath him. As far as Takagi is concerned, this will be his first fight away from Pound Place. His most recent fight was a win over, oh boy, well, my and Andrew Benjamin's guy, 
Hirotaka the Rich Nakata back on July the 8th via TKO at Pancrase 335. But still, though, point of the matter is for Takagi, this is his way to break out of that cycle of fighting only in Pancrase. And this is his way to face off against international talent. Now, unfortunately, because of the topology, because of the topology people, they say that Kolesnik's gonna win this fight ninety four percent. But wow, that much comes Crazy. down. Yeah, when it comes down to this fight, all I gotta ask is, how quick do you think this fight will end? And do you think that Kolesnik will probably take this one? all the way through to a decision or a finish. I'm hoping for a finish, and I'm hoping that he established himself as a, a viable contender for the 145-pound belt. So that that's, that's what I'm looking for. And, and you know, you, you guys already know me. I, I'm really excited about my international fighters getting a leash on the superior rule set to see what they can do with pride rules. And hopefully he knows the assignment, and we get to see some of that here. But his opponent, Takagi, is 6-1. and one. It's only lost once. It's pretty good. So I mean, hey, this you know, if, if Victor, if he better, he better take him serious. You know what I mean? And and you can't underestimate him. Otherwise, he you know. But look, I'm I'm really excited about this this man. I, I can't wait to see him fight. See if he knows the assignment and and to establish himself in the 145 pound division, which is one of Ryzen's best divisions. You know, so I, I'm really looking forward to this one definitely. I would like to say uh, that uh, Kolesnik is originally a, a Russian, uh, but uh, from what I uh, what what I could uh, know, uh, he has uh, some Serbian papers. It's a very interesting fact because uh, Serbia isn't in the in the EU or or something like this. Um, he can uh, he can just uh, train uh, in in Thailand. It's it's very possible. Uh, in Tiger Muay Thai, especially that a lot of uh, R Russians uh, are are training there uh, right now, uh, and in this fight, he will be slightly favorite. Uh, he's uh, very experienced, very well rounded, uh, on a good win streak. Uh, more, moreover, he can uh, fight. Uh, in lightweight as well as in featherweight. Uh, but a couple words about his opponent. Um, I was thinking why they have matched Takagi with this kind of opponent. Uh, and I saw one of his uh, fights, uh, actually one of his knockouts. And he, he has uh, very good uh, power in his right punch. He can uh, knock his uh, opponent out uh, by a single shot. Uh, he is very aggressive, uh, and so you can even uh, see this on the topology statistics or in Shardo, on Shardo statistics, uh, where he has uh, uh, f uh, four knockouts uh, from uh, by from his uh, five wins. Uh, so it's it's a very I would say uh, you can see how he can fight uh, just by these numbers. Uh, of course, he's an underdog, uh, but I think he has some tools that can cause uh, some problems uh, to, to, to Kolesnik. I'm not even uh, talking about that he can make an upset, but uh, he but he can be possibly a very tough opponent for the for the Serbian Russian. Nice. Hmm. Indeed. Right, you you want to keep keep it rolling? Let's go to the next one. Ginji Hara I mean, versus Shoga Ota. I mean, I, uh, okay. I mean, this is first of all before we get off to the I mean before we get on to the rest of the card, I just want to say when it comes down to Kolesnik versus Takagi yeah, I think that Takagi is going to probably get smashed, but, you know, I won't be surprised if he puts up some type of value effort. How? I don't know, but still don't. You got to feel for the fact that this is going to probably be the biggest fight of his career. And, excuse me, 
he got a feel for the fact that Takagi is going to probably go balls to the wall, fight like there's no tomorrow, and actually think about taking a win. But it's highly unlikely that he's going to be able to actually get the win. And I know that basically sounded like the stupidest fight analysis ever, so let's just keep this shit going. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, hey, but, hey, but stickers, you never know. Look at what happened with Chihiro Suzuki and Patricio Pound for Pound Pitbull. That was supposed mm -hmm. to be a one-sided ass-kicking contest for Patricio Pitbull. He was supposed to just steamroll Chihiro. And it ended uh -huh. up being not it, – it, Chihiro absolutely well, was the upset of the year – Knocked him out, mm -hmm. first man in history to do so. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you can't underestimate your opponents no matter what, even if your your record is is way better, like 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 Victor's is. So, I mean, it's it's just like you guys were saying, Takagi's got some knockout power there. So he's got to come, he's got to bring his A game or there could be an upset. So we'll, we'll see. That's oh, why they fight the fights. Totally. Now, okay, uh, the, let's go the question... Get on. Mm -hmm. The question for from my side is uh, if uh, we want to talk uh, too much about uh, these prelims because uh, it's I think uh, there's a cr that two fights on the topology two next fights are clearly the prelims uh, Hara against Ota and Kirishima against Masanari. Uh, uh, I mean, kind of think of it. Do we? I mean, do we really? Yes, let's talk about them. Look, just, just run through them and run through the records and stuff. I mean, because okay, they're going to be okay, okay, okay. It's, it's going to okay. be the ones that probably get watched the most. Okay, uh, here we go. Let's go ahead and talk about them real quick. Jinji Hara, a.k.a. Gene Grappling, Shoot Boxers, Jim Max, 4-1 and one overall, fighting out of Saitama, Japan. He has a record of 4-1 and one with two wins via knockout. His opponent, Shoko Ota, 2-2 two two overall. His two wins are by way of decision, as are his two losses. He fights out of next sports in Komaki, Aichi, Japan. So, yeah, this is basically for the hometown crowd. I don't know much about them. Do y'all? No, no, I'm just looking forward to seeing how they do. Hara's 4-1. This is at 150 pounds. So they could be, you know, fluctuate between lightweight and featherweight. So I mean, could be another another fighter, good fighter emergence for those two. Those are, you know, the best divisions in the Ryzen right now. So, uh -huh. you know, arguably, you know, the lightweight down to, to to flyweight basically are the top divisions in in Ryzen right now. So it could be another good fighter for that division. Uh, that and yes. the fact that they both fight. Well, that and the fact that both of their fights primarily took place in deep. So yeah, oh, nice. this is gonna be a great yeah, this is gonna be a great way for them to introduce themselves to the rising audience, even if it's in the prelims. Well, let's just uh, see if they know the assignment. That that's gonna be the big do they know the assignment or not? Let let's see. <laughs> uh I would I would like um, to say about uh Hara that uh, he has a win uh, over Keisuke Okuda. Uh, former pro wrestler, pro wrestler, uh, he okay. the, who who fought at the very first landmark event, that four fight, uh, card uh, against uh, Hiroaki Suzuki. I uh, from what I remember. Oh, oh nice. yeah, I think I remember Kisuke Okuda for doing moon salts off the cage and getting choked out by Grant Bogdanov. <laughs> nice, <laughs> love the moon salts. But, right, uh, let's, let's go to this next one real quick. Hiroshima versus Yamada. This is a three-one versus two and one. This is at the bantamweight division. This this is another. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, go go ahead, go ahead, run, do the breakdown, Jay Krish. Ah uh, yes, let me go ahead and break that down real quick. Ryuki Kirishima, three and one overall, fighting out of Nakatsugawa, Gifu, Japan, representing martial arts club Nakatsugawa. His opponent, two and one, Masanali who only goes by that particular name. He doesn't go by Masanari Yamada, just Masanari, representing net sports and fighting out of Komaki Aichi Japan. So, yeah, this is another hometown fight. I mean, this is another nice. showcase fight for hometown fighters, even though, uh, of course, you have to play into the fact that, you know, this fight is at Bantamweight is not going to really mean much to the standings. It's not going to really mean much to their records. It's just the fact that, again, 
showcase. I don't know yeah, much so, about them. To add another so, fire to the to that division, uh, and it says here on Tap Audio that they're ranked one sixty eight and one seventy. So they're pretty supposedly pretty evenly match up their records. They only have one loss each. This, this could be a pretty even matchup. Could be a pretty good fight. So I, I'm I'm looking forward to it and see how they perform on the prelims. You know, because it's going to be a free prelims on YouTube, right? So the, the, hopefully they put on a show. Yeah, ho hopefully they put on a show. Hopefully they know the assignment. That, that's that's what I'm looking for. Uh, first and foremost, oh. Masana Masanari is uh, back in Rising uh, after the uh, second trigger show. Uh, he is a former kickboxer and he had uh, oh. his debut fight uh, in Rising as a kickboxer. Right now, he's uh, 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 he's MMA fighter and he's uh, two. So one. he's basically zero and one as a Rising fighter, but he's four and one as a kickboxer. I mean, three and one as a kick. No. Two and one as a Kate boxer, right? I I wouldn't, uh, you know, rely on on that uh, kickboxing records on on topology. But uh, he's a former oh. kickboxer and he's a one uh, in rise. Oh right, right. Of course, I'm an idiot. <laughs> but still, though, <laughs> another another fight that may end up being a part of the prelims is Genki Takano versus Ryota Naito. It's a kickboxing kick belt. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it is a kickboxing belt. Three three minute rounds and all that. But in the still, cage. In the yes. landmark cage. Mm -hmm. In the cage, a cage, a cage. But still <laughs> But still though, we don't know much about either of these guys. Naito, 5'6", 125 pounds at least. His opponent, Genki Takano, by 525 pounds. Naito represents Bellwood Gym, fighting out of Toyohashi Aichi, Japan. And Takano represents Bubuki Gym, fighting out of Kastugai Aichi, Japan. So, yeah, another showcase fight for the hometown fans. Do nice. we care? I mean, it's kickboxing, so we're, this is mostly a mixed martial arts you know, but it's still it's gonna be cool for the hometown crowd. I, I mean, and the kickboxing bouts do deliver the action sometimes. So it, it's uh, sure, yes, we care. And if it's gonna be on the free prelims, of course we care. We want to see some great action on the free prelims when most of the people will be tuning in. Uh, oh, yeah. um, of course, uh, Ryota Naito is back in Rising. He he has uh, one zero. He fought at uh, Rising twenty seven. Uh, he's he's he is a younger brother or uh, of uh, Taiki Naito, uh, mm -hmm. the for, also uh, the former uh, Rising fighter, uh, current one championship fighter, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, he he also is a former deep kick uh, champ, very popular uh, promotion, uh, especially and on the, the Discord. <laughs> and and also yeah, uh, he yes he he fought in Rise. He fought in uh, shoot boxing. Uh, he fought in uh, knockout. So, so um, experience in a multiple uh, organizations. Uh, I saw he. I remember his one fight from Rise with David Chibana. He got knocked out, but it was very, uh, very tough fight. Um, he he shown a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of good skills. Uh, a lot of uh, character, uh, so I'm really looking forward, to, especially to to this fight. This fight, uh, it's a kickboxing fight in a cage uh, at the at the MMA event. Nice, hmm. very well said. Interesting. Right. Let's keep it rolling here. Let's go to the next one. Yusaku uh, yeah. Nakamura versus Hiroya Kondo. Go ahead, break it down, Jay Krish. Yeah. Oh, are you yeah, are you doing please. something right now? Uh, you know what? Let me go ahead and break this down. I was just <laughs> flipping the channel on my TV. Sorry about that. <laughs> what are you, you watching the show while you're doing the, the review? <laughs> the football game's not I mean, on yet, is it? I think of it. I gotta do something to keep myself from getting bored. <laughs> what? You're getting still, bored? Though, no way. This is fun. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is fun and awesome. But let's go ahead and keep this going before I do actually get bored. Still, though. <laughs> Yusaku Nakamura versus Hiroya Kondo. Yusaku Nakamura, 17 and 10 overall, 37 years of age, 5, 527 and a quarter pounds, representing Style MMA Studio and Team Alpha Male Japan. 
fighting out of Osaka. His opponent, the Asakura Action Brother teammate, Hiroya Kondo. 8 11 nice. and 1, representing Triforce Jiu Jitsu Academy, fighting out of Hyogo, Japan. He most recently lost his Rise and Fight at Super Rise and 2 to Yuki Ito back on July 30th. Of course, Yusaku Nakamura last fought in Ryzen back at Ryzen 41, getting KO'd by Memon Mamedov. He is currently 2 and 5 under Ryzen rules and is a one fight dream veteran. So mm, nice. Let's so yeah, let's go ahead and just ask. We know that Nakamura is probably going to win this fight just off record alone, but considering that Kondo is an Asakura action teammate who almost almost won against Yuki Ito, I mean, do you think that this one might be a fast paced three round war? Absolutely, another flyweight bout. Let's point that out. One of their the divisions they're building, both guys coming off a loss, looking to to get that rise in W. They're going to be bringing it. It's going to be action packed. Uh, Kondo's from the Azakura Action Bros camp. Nakamura's got plenty of experience. I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to this one because yeah, you know the, the flyweights that that's going to be one of the the new featured divisions. So I'm looking for someone to really you know these guys want to make a name for themselves, right? And and get that first rise in W. Get them insert themselves into the conversation in the flyweight division. So well, I'm, I'm looking on the here. contrary, like I said, Yusaku is two and five under Ryzen rules. Oh, oh, sorry, I sorry. His uh, last there. win, his last win in Ryzen was on November 6, twenty twenty two, when he defeated Takaki Soya via unanimous decision at Ryzen Landmark Four. Okay, I, what I meant to say is they were both coming off a lot. They're looking to rebound, not get their first W. They're looking to rebound. And get a W basically. So that, that's a that's little, little, little clarification there. So, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Daniel, how about you? Okay. Um, I would uh, okay. Um, Yuki Ito's uh, last fight uh, was also uh, against Hiroya Kondo. Uh, Hiroya was trying uh, to just uh, make a, make this fight, uh, fight like a grind fest. Uh, but from the other hand, uh, Ito's takedown defense was very fine uh, in that uh, fight. It was a uh, very uh, action-packed uh, uh, fight, unfortunately for, for Hiroya, who is a teammate of Asakura Brothers. Uh, he lost, uh, but he also uh, shown uh, some, some skills that uh, gave him another chance uh, in Ryzen. Uh, from the other hand, uh, he has a um, former karate fighter, former uh, WSF Global Championships uh, champion. I don't know if you remember that uh, at the beginning. I think of, I remember. I think I remember WSO Global and the fact that Yusaku Nakamura is a former WSO Global champion. And I also remember him taking an ass whooping from Tenshin Asukawa. Uh, yes, and uh, he was uh, going everywhere with with that belt, uh, with that WSOF, uh, WSOF GC belt, and uh, with tension Nasukawa, it's a common uh, mistake in all databases. It was not a kickboxing fight, but it was the mixed rules mixed rules fight. Uh, but he got knocked out in the first kickboxing round, and that's why. Uh, but and uh, this is the the main uh, mistake about about the databases. Uh, about his last, uh, uh, not, not last fight, because his last fight with, with Mamadov uh, did not last uh, very long. He got knocked out on the ground uh, in uh, 23 seconds. Uh, but um, with about his fight with Takaki Soya, I think that uh, promoters, um, the matchmaker, wanted to just see uh, the stand and bank fight. But hmm. uh, Nakamura surprised everyone and uh, turned on uh, the wrestler mode and actually out wrestled uh, soya and derailed his hype train as a first uh, so um, in this case i think the the roles will be totally different probably mm. most probably hiroya will try to take uh, nakamura down and uh, nakamura will try to uh, take this fight uh, to, to maintain this fight on feet and uh, most this is the most probably 
uh, outcome of this fight, in my opinion. Nice. Hmm. Of course. So, uh, basically, we're all in agreement that Nakamura is going to win this fight, right? Mm, sure. I'm not sure. He, 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 he is very unpredictable. Uh, he has uh, some losing streak. Uh, you, you, you think that uh, he sucks, and uh, suddenly he has something like soy about, where where he's derailing the high print of a, of a prospect. So we don't know uh, how what to expect uh, from from this fight, and what will first and foremost Nakamura will do. Hmm. Understood, understood. So now we can go on to the next fight. And it features a big name UFC veteran in a big time flyweight bout, which of course we can say, you know, whoever wins this is gonna probably position themselves if there, there was a flyweight division to be at the top of the division. And that is Utaro Ban Munamoto versus Hokelio Pontohin. First of all, the particulars for Utaro Munamoto. 11, 7, and 2 overall, 5, 614. Well, he weighed in previously at 114.9 pounds for a men's straw weight fight. I don't know why he would subject himself to fighting in the pack mule division. But yeah, he fights at 125. But on topology, his weight is 115 pounds. I, I just don't know how the hell you do that. How the hell you suffer through that. But yeah. He's 28 years old. He fights out of a live gym, the former gym of Ray Seppo and Bob Armstrong and Pancrase. He is going to be showcasing for the hometown crowd in Nagoya. His opponent, six-fight UFC veteran Hogelio Bontohin. I'm saying that in the Brazilian sense because calling him Rogerio Bontorim just sounds a little bit off. Anyways, He's 5'5", 125 and a half pounds, 31 years of age, with a 67-inch reach, fighting out of Gao Hibelo team, fighting out of Colombo, Pajana, Brazil. For Muramoto, he is 2-2 two and two inside the rising ring or cage. Both of his wins via knockout. For Bontohim, he's coming off his first rising loss, which was a TKO loss via knee at Ryzen 40 back on New Year's Eve to Yuki Motoya. And that was his first post-UFC fight after losing to Raw Dog Brandon Royval, who was set to get a title opportunity down the line. But, yeah, like I mentioned, this fight is going to have some serious implications when it comes down to the Ryzen flyweight division, if there was such a thing. Who do y'all got? I'm picking Bontorin. I think that this is going to really, I mean, he's, he's really going to establish himself right now as a, a contender for, and then a flyweight. The, the winner of this bout right here is going to establish a flyweight uh, contender, at least for a, a Grand Prix, a future Grand Prix, I think. The, whoever, whoever wins this will definitely, especially if it's Bontorin, because like you said, Jay Krish, former UFC guy, everything. So, I mean, this, this is, I mean, he's coming off that huge loss that, I mean, that was a knockout of the year candidate that he that he was on the wrong end of. So he's going to be looking to bounce back from that, and and he, he wants to erase that from people's minds. So he's going to put he's going to come in with a chip on his shoulder here to really put on a good performance and, and establish himself in the new flyweight division, and potentially, hopefully, there's a, a grand prix later on in the year. So I, I'm really looking forward to this one. I think it's the featured flyweight bout of the night, and and I just I, I well at least one of them. And I really can't wait to see how it plays out. Okay, Daniel, what say you? Uh, about this fight, uh, I have an, an impression that Bontorin um, uh, had uh, uh, rel relatively easy matchmaking because we have to remember that he's back in flyweight. He's the de rising debut uh, against Motoya where he finished out, uh, finished, uh, knocked out. Uh, it was out cold by, by a knee, but it was in bantamweight. Uh, he used to fight uh, in in uh, in a flyweight, in a 57 kilo limit. 
and I don't think that uh, that matchmakers wanted to give him a very hard task uh, at his beginning of his uh, journey with rising uh, flyweight. If this is this may be a sign, if they are giving him a bit easier opponent, because let's say this uh, ban is is a typical uh, gatekeeper for, for for the for a lot of fighters. Uh, mm. and, uh, and we so and, would you basically say he's like a jobber to the stars? Mm, is this is, is this a different uh term uh, than the gatekeeper? Um, yes, it's more, it's more like a tomato yes. can. Uh, I think that he's kind of you know, he's not a bad fighter, he's an average fighter, but you have <laughs> to beat this kind of guy if you want to. Uh, go for for uh, bigger challenges uh, in, well in, in my opinion. And uh, well as I, as I, as I said, yes, as, as I said, be, as I said before, uh, Bond, uh, most probably the matchmakers has uh, the matchmaker uh, has um, has uh, an idea for Bontorin for the future, future, for the future event, future future matches uh, in in Ryzen, and that's why. They don't uh, giving him uh, a, a higher, I would say, ranked opponent. But there is no ranking uh, in in Ryzen as we uh, know know very well. But uh, definitely, uh, Pontorin is will be a a, fav a slightly favorite. Uh, Muramoto is a heavy underdog, but uh, I'm sure that uh, he 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 trained. Uh, the uh, counter counter knees to just surprise uh, to make a surprise uh, to make a big upset uh, like uh, like Motoya uh, did uh, with Bontorin on New, on New Year's Eve. Nice, yeah. indeed. I mean, I think that when it comes down to this fight, I mean, y'all can say that you know Muramoto is for probably going to be an average fighter how he is an average fighter but that don't make fault to me any better you know what I mean I just think that when it comes down to this fight in particular fault didn't get a chance to showcase himself on New Year's Eve against Yuki Montoya I think now that you know shook off the cowweb so to speak we're going to probably see him turn up the gas a little bit when it comes down to this fight. I think that when it comes down to this particular bout, we're going to see Bontohim take the finish, preferably in the first two rounds, and show what show Ryzen what he truly is all about. Why the hell they signed him? Why the hell his agent, Lucas Lucas, basically referred me to him, so to speak? Nice. Nice. Okay, yeah, let's, hmm. let's keep it rolling. We're we're because we're do, we're doing pretty good on time here. We might even keep it under two and a half hours here. So let's keep it rolling oh, here. Yeah. We got let's go the ahead next one. and talk about the let's go ahead and talk about the third to last MMA fight on our little list, and that is Junior Ibichu Hibino versus Joji Goto. Joji Goto most recently defeated Trent Nino Loco Gurdham or Crazy ninja, so to speak. He stands in at five feet eight inches tall, weighs in at 134 and a third pounds, 27 years of age, represents her mono gym, fights out of Sapporo, Hokkaido, Japan. As I mentioned before, he twisted Trent Gurdham's body into a contortionist, into a little contortionist doll. No disrespect. I hope that Gurdham is still recuperating well. But still, though, outside of that one win in Ryzen so far, he is an 8-3-1 veteran of Pan Place and a 4-3 veteran of Shuto. And he is also a former... Oh, wait, no, actually, he's not a former champion, but he did also fight in Rise kickboxing as well. So there's that, too. His opponent, Dunia Ibitu Hibino. Six and two overall, five seven hundred and thirty-five pounds, twenty-four years of age, represents Ishisuna MMA gym fighting out 
of da, 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 Seto Aichi Japan. So yet another hometown fight for the fans to enjoy, I guess. I mean, I don't know if this would be opening up the card or this. No, it actually, no. Ibinu is a hometown fighter. He's not exactly, I mean, he's not exactly facing a hometown guy. But still, though, he hasn't fought in Ryzen since last year, Landmark 4, knocking out Riku Yoshida. Other than that, he's a strong fighter coming out of deep where he's had a 5-2 and two record so far. So I don't know where this fight's going to be placed on the card. But do you think that Joji Goto has another twist of submission in him? Possibly, possibly. But, I mean... Hibino's got that uh, Ryzen Cage experience from Landmark 4. That was one of the top. That, that, I think that was a, a event of the year candidate, actually. So, I mean, that's that's pretty promising for him. I'm looking forward to that, seeing which one. So, that, you're telling me that Goto is, since he got this twister submission last time, this is this is a classic striker versus grappler matchup, I'm guessing. You can so say we'll, that. We'll see. You can say that. Okay, cool. So, so let, let's, see, uh, let, let's see how it plays out. I mean, uh, well, you know, Habino's got that cage experience already. Goto, he was not in the cage, right? He was in the ring when he did that pretzel, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So he's he's got to adjust to the ring. I mean, excuse me, he's got to adjust to the cage this time. Let's see if he can cage. do that. Yeah, yeah. So let's see if he can do that. Let's see how, you know, what how Habino's takedown defense and all that stuff is. And let's see how this classic striker versus grappler matchup plays out. So I'm I'm actually kind of rooting for Habino because he's been on the in, in the cage before, in the in the rising cage before on a previous landmark. And it was, like I said, a event of the year candidate. So I'm looking for him to continue that and bring the action here to landmark six. And because I'm, I'm hoping that this is another event of the year candidate right here, so I'm looking forward to this one for sure. Another, and also want to make sure point out it's in the bantamweight division, one of Ryzen's strongest divisions, and of course that is where uh, Juan Archuleta is the champion right now, and that's you know they're going to hopefully run back that Archuleta and Kyle Zakura uh, super fight for New Year's Eve. So, but this is another bantamweight to have an, add another fighter to that that roster of, of you know that's one of their top divisions so looking forward to it about I this see. fight Daniel, uh -huh. what about yourself uh about this fight uh, i have an impression that there will be um, the clash between well-rounded fighter that uh, goto is because in my opinion uh in his debut he was the mvp of the uh, mvp uh, of the whole 43 event or, or, or one uh, or uh, at least he was one uh, he had one of the best performances against very well experienced Trent Gertham uh he outstriked him the I don't know if you remember but at the end uh, just before the the, the bell uh, for the break after the the first round uh, he knocked down uh, very, uh, very, <clears throat> very uh, heavy in a very heavy way, uh, Gerd Ham, and he almost finished him. And Gerd Ham uh, was uh, saved by the bell. And then after uh, the break in the second round, uh, from what I remember, uh, Trent uh, tried to make a takedown. Uh, Joji uh, defended it. Uh, and he, he took his back, and uh, and uh, and then he he made that famous twister, the first one in the in the whole Ryzen history. Uh, and uh, I was very impressed. And after this fight, uh, I'm on the I'm really on the hype train. But from the other hand, uh, Hibino is very I would say inconvenient uh, uh, opponent because uh, he has uh, serious uh, wrestling skills. Uh, he he relies very heavy on on ground and pound, and uh, he <clears throat> I would like to say that he can destroy every game plan um, because uh, as I said before he is a, uh, he, he has a good wrestling skills uh, strong he's strong uh, physically and in my opinion everything uh, or a lot of will depends uh how uh goto will control the the action of course he can go to the ground 
but uh, he can uh, but he can also strike he has that uh, power in the uh, in the punches uh but as i uh, as i said just before uh, i do i don't exclude the possibility that he will uh, go to the ground or maybe like like with gertham uh, he can defend the takedown and then he can counter the the, the takedown and uh, go to the ground with with his op opponent i'm really looking forward uh, to this fight but more i'm looking forward the next uh, Joji Goto's uh, performance. Nice. Yeah, I see. Uh, I see. What, I want, what, what I wanted to say, uh, the, 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 the last thing about the cage experience. Uh, Goto has uh, multiple uh, fights in, in Shuto and, and Pancras. Uh, oh, okay. And it, it's all in the cage. Okay, cool. So he's oh, already got cage experience. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay, so it won't be like something he has to adjust to it. Oh, excellent! So that, that's going to make this bout even more better, I think. And and, and like like Daniel was saying, that that's pretty significant that he's the first one in Rise in history to hit the twister, right? So I mean, he's he's going to be wanting to follow that up with a, another exceptional performance. So I mean, hey, you can get what you want here, Daniel, and you can see a really good, really fun fight here and a really good finish from him, and to establish himself into that bantamweight division. So well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one plays out. So, Jay, Chris, you you want to say anything else on this one? Let's, let's move to the 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 probably the headlining kickboxing bout of the night. I mean, I ain't got nothing else to say about that fight other than I think that it's gonna probably end in a Joji Goto Twister submission finish again. Oh, you think he's back to back to Twisters? Wow. I mean, That'd if he has the ball, if he has the balls for it, might as well go ahead and double up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but still, yes, though. absolutely. Hey, hey as, as, look, still, all, all I care about, if it goes on the ground, I want some 12 to 6 elbows. I don't want them doing the, the, the regular lay and pray stuff. I want some 12 to 6 elbows or the ref to stand them up. Make sure these guys know the assignment for the ground. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, course, let's, let's get on this kickboxing bout. Let's get the kickboxing yeah, bout. Let's go ahead and talk about the last kickboxing bout of this fight card, and that is Yabai Daro. <laughs> taking on Yuta Saito. The man formerly known as King Genji Umeno, 5'11", 135 pounds, 34 years of age, with a 69 and a third inch reach, representing Phoenix Gym, fighting out of Kyoto, Tokyo, Japan. He is currently 1, 3, and 2 in rising competition. Yeah. Even though a lot of people basically love him, the dude's a lovable loser, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, last year he fought. Well, yeah, he's won three and two in Ryzen, won two and two in actual fights in Ryzen. But yeah, a lot of people remember him more for that no contest he had with Ren Hiromoto in that exhibition boxing match last New Year's Eve that really. I mean, the only thing that people were interested about in that fight was the entrance. Let's be real. <laughs> and then they had the <laughs> next fight. He got knocked out by Hiroki Suzuki via knee, of course, at Ryzen 43. The dude, I mean, yeah, let's just face it. His lone win in Ryzen was on a technicality because Trent Nino Loco gird him had a knee, had a leg injury. But we all know that if he would have, I mean, if that fight would have continued, Gurdon would have whooped his ass, plain and simple. I mean, aside from that, it's just a hodgepodge of craziness. I mean, we all remember back on June 27, 2021, he was supposed to fight Koji Tanaka, and the accidental headbutt happened, and then it messed up a, one, a perfectly crazy one-night kickboxing tournament. So they had the rematch on March 19, 2022, and he lost there via majority decision. But still, though, point of the matter is this fight between him and Yuto Saito, who is 5'7", 135 pounds, represents the JK tribe fighting out of Tomaki, Aichi, Japan. So another home province, another home prefecture fighter, 31 years old, by the way, who is a longtime veteran of K1 and Klush. And he, of course. But still, though, this fight would y'all say it's a gimme fight for your bye, Donald? 
I don't. I really don't think there's any really gimme fights, but we you never know. I'm not too. I'm not not the best knowledge on kickboxing, but that's interesting. You said that he's he's from uh he got a lot of experience in K1 and stuff, and hopefully that that well, is well, a, a, his a, opponent. His opponent oh, okay. Yuto Saito has a lot of experience in K1. Genji okay, well, is a prize fighter. Oh, okay. Well, well, still, it, it's it's exciting to see that the a, a former K1 fighter. Is now on rising, and I'm hoping that that leads. That's like pre preluding to more collaboration between Ryzen and K1, because you know I I just love K K1 has the the real deal eight man one night grand prix. Maybe we could see that uh, you know like a joint one in the future. You know between Ryzen and Ryzen K1, I think that'd be awesome. Uh, maybe build into like another the match two. You know what I mean? A, a, an event like that would be awesome. So I I I'd like that, and then. But, I mean, th for this one, I guess I'm rooting for uh, Omino, you know, because everybody likes him, veteran uh, of Arise and everything. So, hopefully he gets the win, but you never know. So, I'm just – I hope it's just a good fight for the fans, basically. Mm -hmm. And, Daniel, what say you about this fight? Mm -hmm. I've listened to the, your opinion about Genji, but I think you are uh, un uh, underrating uh, Umino. Uh, bit, no, uh... oh, wait. you basically saying that Genji Umeno isn't a lovable loser? Uh, <laughs> he, he he isn't... Uh, I will tell you this. Uh, he isn't very very lucky. He has uh, some... Um, you know... He likes to get into trouble. He, 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 sometimes he's losing his focus uh, from, from what I saw. Uh, it was... Uh, like It was definitely visible... In his fight, in his last fight at 43 with uh, Chikiro's brother, uh, because he he was maintaining the distance, he was out punching uh, Suzuki, but he got caught uh, by the knee that ended uh, this fight. So uh, I'm I can say he is very well experienced. He is very well achieved fighter, but he uh, but still. He he has some. Uh, he used to um, make some mistakes that uh, it that costs him a win uh, in the, in a fight. From the other hand, uh, Yuto Saito, uh, I think uh, he's an uh, his effect of uh, cooperation between between Ryzen and uh, K1 uh, Japan Group. Uh, it's it's the next uh, next chapter of this uh, new. Uh, cooperation after uh, landing Miki Oweda uh, to K1. Um, we have a uh, crash fighter who, uh, as you said before, you ha uh, he has some experience in in uh, at the K1 events, so the main main ones, but only on the opening uh, bouts, uh, on the uh, on the opening uh, opening portion. Uh, he mainly uh, fights in in Crush, so the K1 Development League. Uh, and uh, from what I could see, uh, he 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 um, is like a, a very offensive fighter. He's pushing his opponents uh, through the through the ropes, and uh, everything will depends on if uh, Genji will uh, keep uh, focus. And if uh, he will be able to maintain uh, the man maintain the distance by his uh, straight uh, punches and and kicks, uh, and everything will decide uh, which uh, which will be the uh, the, the distance. It, if it will if it will, will uh, if Genji will be maintaining the distance or Saito will go inside and will out will out punch uh, Genji. That's all. Hmm. I see. I see. So when it comes down to this, y'all think that, I mean, you think that Genji is going to win this fight, right? Mm, I think he's a favorite, but uh, not, not uh, you know, very, uh, not very favorite, <laughs> I, would, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> understood. Understood. So, you know what, since I ain't got nothing to talk about when it comes down to this fight, other than Genji is probably going to win this fight, I mean, y'all want to go ahead and wrap this Keep up it rolling. Keep it rolling. Let's go. Let's go to the next one.
Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the mythical unicorn that is the rising <laughs> middleweight division. And that is Igor Fat Ninja Tanabe, the master of the first round submission right now, versus Animal Koji Shikuwa. First of all, the particulars for Igor Fat Ninja Tanabe. He is six feet tall. He is 185 pounds. He fights pretty much anywhere from middleweight to heavyweight, as has been proven over the last year, even though he started his career out in 2021. He's 3-0, all three wins via first-round submission. He is 23 years old, born May 9, 2000. These kids grow up so damn fast. Represents <laughs> Igloo BJJ and fights out of... No, he represents... Igloo BJJ and fights out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, by way now of, and see, this is how I know we're basically wasting time because he fights out of Igloo, oh shit, what am I trying to say? He fights out of Igloo BJJ, fights out of Setagaya, Tokyo, Japan, by way of Sao Paulo, Brazil. See how easy that was? But yeah, point of the matter, he's 3-0 and as a mixed martial artist. The last two of his three wins, by way of heel hook. He choked out Hiroyuki Shimizu via first round triangle choke back at a heat show and back at a heat show back in October 2021. He submitted Melvin No Mercy Man off at Enoki Bombaye Gan Ryujima back in December, and he submitted Daichi Abe via heel hook back at Super Rising on July 30th. His opponent, another local athlete, so to speak, another jobber, let's be real, Animal <laughs> Koji Shikuba, 5'10", 183 and a half pounds, 32 years of age, representing Legion Top Team, fighting out of Nagoya, Aichi, Japan. He just recently wrapped up a three-fight stint in that down one championship but has not <laughs> fought as a mixed martial artist since before the pandemic. I mean, I can't. I mean, other than that, he's a K1 kickboxer, fought the last two years, un fought the last three years, actually, under K1, before K1 went on this big revamp. But still, another fight with another local athlete, another jobber, so to speak. How bad of a squash match do you think this is going to be for Igor Tanabe? And do you think that it'll end in another first round heel hook? Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be one of those uh, uh, showcase fights where the, the, the hot prospect, which in this case is Fat Ninja at middleweight, he's supposed to go in there and destroy, right? And, and it's going to be supposed to be impressive, mm -hmm. hopefully, another first round submission. But I mean, the guy is, it's, it's another classic striker versus grappler matchup. So Shikuwa is from K1, like you were saying, a kickboxing crossover. So he's obviously got striking. So we'll see how his takedown defense well, actually, is. But he fought just... in mixed martial arts first before kickboxing. But go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, still, still, he, he moonlights and, and you know both goes back and forth. So he's got some striking skills. So we'll see how you know if he's got the if he got takedown defense, stay on the feet. But this is looking like on paper, it's an, a showcase fight for Fat Ninja Igor Tananabe. So. That's what I'm guessing is going to happen. It's going to be another first round submission for him. That that's what's supposed to happen, right? But let's see if if Shikuwa can make this uh, fight turn into a brawl and put uh, Igor into some precarious positions himself. So we'll see how it plays out. Mm -hmm. so it, will, and it will be, yeah, yeah. It, it will be most probably very similar to to his fight with uh, Melvin Manuf. Uh, so he will uh, take. Uh, so Igor will take this fight to the ground uh, kind of quickly and will uh, get a next and, and another submission uh, finish. As you said before, uh, Koji, uh, Animal Koji Shikoa uh, was uh, primarily an MMA fighter. He fought in uh, one development series, but uh, never been uh, a big, big prospect, big talent. Uh, then uh, he, he switched into a kickboxing his violent style uh, caused, uh, caused that uh, K1 uh, was giving him a fight. And uh, I think he's uh, another uh, loan from K1 Japan uh, group. 
nice. he, he definitely Igor has to watch out because uh, he because his opponent uh, is punching harder than uh, than uh, Hiroyuki Abe. Uh, and if he will receive a single punch, uh, he can feel it uh, very well. Uh, but as I said before, uh, I predict uh, kind of quick work for, for Igor Tanabe. Hmm. I see, I see. Uh, so you think, I, I mean, come I, think of it, I just got to ask, how many seconds do you think that fight is going to last? You know what? Uh, not definitely not too long because uh, I saw some uh, fights, MMA fights of of Koji, and uh, he never be ne never had a very good takedown defense. So this oh, is okay. his another another problem. Uh, in and mm -hmm. with with a grappler orthodox orthodox grappler like like Tanabe, it's it's not a good. Not a good thing uh, for him, especially that I think that I think that uh, he hasn't been uh, training regular uh, MMA uh, through last years. So it is what it is. I see. So yeah, we're well, all in favor of a Tanabe win, preferably be a first round heel hook. My dear. yes, yes. Okay. All right, let's, let's well, move on to the potential main event here. The last fight on the on the on our card list right here, possibly. You know, we don't know what the the bout order is yet, but this could be one of the higher profile fights here. And go ahead, well, break it down, Jake. Not only is a high, not only, and yeah, we do we want to we do want to finish this out strong, but not, not only is this a higher profile fight, but it just got added as of this past weekend. 2016 Olympic silver medal wrestling gold. No, damn it. What am I trying to say? 2016. Olympian. Yeah, 2016 Olympic Greco Roman silver medalist Shinobu Ota versus <laughs> Shoko Matsumitsu Sato. First of all, the particulars for Shinobu Ota, Olympic silver medalist in 2016. 5'5", 134 and a third pound, 29 years of age, representing Paresta Kashiwa, fighting out of Konohe Aomori, Japan. His Ryzen record, of course, he's fought all of his fights in Ryzen so far in his career. Four wins, two losses. Three of those four wins by way of, and to prove that he has hands and feet, finish, knockouts. He knocked out Kazuma Sone back on New Year's Eve 2021. He knocked out Kazuma Kumamoto in the first round back at Rising Landmark 5 in April. And he knocked out Kenta Takizawa to the point where the referee had to stop the damn fight six seconds before the end of round one. So, yeah, he got them hand. No, he's going to give those hands and feet. So to speak, <laughs> tough. I mean, Taylor made for somebody who lost their first MMA fight to Hideo Tokoro back on New Year's Eve 2020. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let me continue. Shoko Masumitsu Sato will be making his Ryzen Fighting Federation debut. He holds an MMA record of 34 wins, 15 losses, two draws, and one no contest with 23 of those wins by way of finish, 20 knockouts, three submissions, 5, 944 and a half pounds with, 70 inch, with a 71-inch reach, fighting out of Naruto, Toshima, no, ah, <laughs> get it together, Christian, get it together, <laughs> fighting out of Naruto, Tokushima, Japan, by way of Yokohama, Kanagawa, Japan, representing the Sakaguchi Dojo. He is a three-fight veteran of Sengoku. He is a longtime veteran of Shudo, former Shudo Bantamweight champion, might I add. He's a former veteran of Ballet Tudo Japan, Pancras, and Road FC, where he also fought and well, he also fought and lost to Jay Hoon Moon, rising alum, and UFC alum Kyung Ho Kang. And he also fought more recently for that damn one championship. <laughs> basically, 
basically going four and two there and just getting out of purgatory, so to speak, with a win over Jay Woon Kim back in January. So, again, I got to ask. Alta, Olympic silver medal wrestler with heavy hands versus Shoko Sato, who's pretty much fought everywhere and done everything before this kid could even let his nuts hang, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, who y'all? Yeah, I mean, look, look, this is this is really uh, Ota's test right here against a, a, a clear veteran of the sport, like you were saying, with all, all his accolades and stuff that he's got. So this is really, if Ota can shine right here, he's going to establish himself as a clear contender in the uh, the Bantamweight division, one of the rising strongest divisions. So I'm really looking forward to that. I really like Ota, so Olympic silver medalist, like you were saying, that's that's – you know, that's it, you know what an athlete to even make the podium in the Olympics. He's just, so he's an Olympian with Greco-Roman. That's of course you know the the takedowns where you can't like you know shoot with the legs and stuff. It's got to be the upper body takedowns and stuff. So he's gonna have. Hopefully, we get to see some suplexes and stuff like that, and and see how how he you know handles a, a, a savvy veteran like 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 Sato. I mean, Sato's got over oh. fifty fights. It looks like. Or, or no, wait, is it 50 or is it – it's getting close to 50. Well, anyways, he's, he's a, a clear veteran. Like you said, former champion of some of organizations and stuff. So it's going to bring some veteran savvy in this, and we're going to get to see how Ota deals with, with a savvy veteran and if Ota is ready to take that next step to the next level of being a contender. Well, so I'm really looking forward to this one. On I agree with you on that. But when it comes down to Sato, he is a 53-fight veteran. Oh, okay, it is 53. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, um, I was doing the wrong math in my head. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's over fifty fight veteran, so clear, clear experience right here. And and, and it's it, this is really Ota's. <laughs> most, I mean, if it's going to be the main event, uh, we don't know if it's going to be the main event or not. But still, if it is, this is really Ota's time to shine right here and really establish himself as a, a, another contender in Ry- one of Ryzen's deepest divisions, one hundred thirty five pounds. I see. And Daniel, what say you? What are your thoughts about this fight? I would like to ask you because uh, we all know that uh, Sato is, uh, uh, I would say, uh, one week uh, replacement uh, uh, for uh, for uh, Ota because he he replaced uh, Naoki Inoue. Oh right, he, and, yeah, he replaced Naoki Inoue. <clears throat> and uh, the the main question is, isn't it much better for Ota? To not uh, fight Naoki at this uh, at this stage, uh, because uh, Sato, of course, he is experienced, so well experienced fighter, and he 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 was losing losing recently only with really strong fighters like Fabrizio Andras. Uh, but in terms of style, he's very similar fighter to to Ota. He uh, he isn't uh, he he I would say even that that he um, he's least keen to exchange punches than Ota, uh, and he usually uh, looks for a takedown and then he's trying to control his opponent or or uh, try to try to just make a ground and pound and I think uh, in terms of style, Ota uh, for Ota uh, from Ota's point of view from Ota's position he, Sato is much better be, much better opponent uh, much more convenient than Naoki is <laughs> true true very true so yeah all in favor do we think that Ulta is going to win this fight I'm hoping so. Yes, I'm hoping so. I'd like to see him establish himself as another contender in one of Ryzen's best divisions. So I'm, I'm definitely hoping for Ota to, to get a, a a nice, not just a, a nice clear cut victory, but a, a sensational, like like good finish victory type of thing. So I'm, I'm looking for a, a really really stand up performance from Ota here because, like, like you guys are saying, this was I, I think that that's why I'm thinking this is going to be the main event because originally it was supposed to be against Naoki okay, in a way. So that would obviously have been the main event. Ota versus Inoue, very strong fighters. So that's why I'm guessing that this will still be the main event because, of, you know, half it's Ota as well. So I'm really looking forward to it. I want to see Ota, how, how he can do against a savvy veteran. 
like Sato. I mean, it's 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 really gonna be really gonna tell us how where Oath is at. I, I'm looking forward to this one a lot. Yes. Uh huh. And Daniel. Mm, my my pick for this uh, for this uh, bout. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. I would say that uh, Ota is in a good position. Uh, he's well. Uh, we we have a guarantee that he is well prepared. He, he his opponent is of course much more experienced, but uh, he took this uh, fight with one week notice, maybe a bit mm, bit longer, but not more. Uh, and uh, and in in terms of style, uh, he he is a suitable uh, opponent for for uh, Ota. So I would say that uh, Ota uh, can can. I w it won't be an upset for me. Uh, I I'm expecting that uh, Ota can uh, can do his work and uh, add a next good uh, good name to his uh, to his fight uh, record. Uh, another you know green screen. Uh, green square to uh, to his record on on, on databases, and I think uh, he he will win this fight. But if uh, it will be by a finish, I don't think so. Mm. Hmm. But you think that it's going to end in some way with a Shinobu to win, right? I think so. I see. So now that we're getting close to the end of this little chat session slash podcast, what have you? I mean, I just want to basically ask, what are the three fights that y'all are most looking forward to? And what's the one fight that you're not looking forward to? Because, again, we don't know the battle order. It'll probably be done by the time this damn thing gets uploaded. But still, though, <laughs> what are the three fights y'all are looking forward to? And what's one fight that you're not looking forward to? Okay, you want, you want me to go first, Daniel? I'll, I'll just go first real quick. Uh, the three fights I'm looking forward to... Definitely, I, I can't wait to see Victor Kolesnik. I mean, he's I think he's going to establish himself as, as a contender at 145 pounds, one of, one of Bell, I mean, excuse me, one of Ryzen's best divisions. And then, you know, I'm also looking forward to, I mean, gosh, I want to, there's a bunch of them I want to say, you know, I, I, I just got to pick three. So, I mean, I want to say the women's bout. I want to say that women's bout because they're both good records and, and you know, three and one versus three and oh. And the women have have really, especially since this is the only women's bout on there. I'm expecting the ladies to actually, you know, to really bring it, to really say, hey, you know, the ladies can scrap too, you know. And, and, the, and the women's bouts in Rising on a superior rule set have, have been really exciting, you know. So I'm really looking forward to that one as well. And then, man, to pick the third one, I, I just, gosh, there's so many good ones here. I, I wanted to say Bontorin as well, but man, I'm really looking forward to see what Ota can do. You know, Ota against an experienced veteran. I, I know he's on a you know just a couple weeks notice, but still, this is this is really I, I believe it's Ota's like, like it, it's it's for him that he can really showcase himself and see what he can do against a, a savvy veteran and really establish himself in one of Rice's premier divisions to where he's you know he's going to be putting himself in a conversation. He's going to have to fight guys like like in a way and you know all the top guys at 135 pounds. So. I'm I'm looking forward to yeah I'm looking forward to that one and what I'm not looking forward to I mean dude there's really not I mean I'm looking forward to all these even the kickboxing bouts dude the kickboxing bouts we got K1 crossover guys on there so I mean I, I you know I'm loving that the the collaboration with K1 yeah you know, and, and just I don't know if you saw of course you guys saw but but uh K hey, Chris your your favorite uh, CEO of that damn one championship he was talking <laughs> trash. <laughs> on K1 and, and Japanese kickboxing and, and stupidly talking trash. Like how, why, why would he even do that? You know? So I, I'm looking forward to, to seeing even the kickboxing with these K1 guys on there. Maybe they got to put a little chip on their shoulder, be like, Hey, you know, we're, we don't, this, this guy, this Shotry guy, he don't know what he's talking about. K1 is, is action packed fighters here. And of course they do have the only, they're, they're the only ones to do the real deal. Eight man, one night grand prix anymore. One championship. Don't do that stuff. So I mean, even the even the kickboxing bouts, I'm looking forward to seeing. So I, I just don't, I can't. I mean, you know what? I got one that I'm not. How about the Igor Tananabe one? Because that one is is the most clear cut. That's supposed to be like a, a showcase slash squash match type of type of fight there. So I'm gonna pick that one as the one I'm not really looking forward to. But I, but I still am because you know Fat Ninja establishes and 
basically by himself building the 185 pound middleweight division. So, I mean, there's, there's stuff to, for every single bout on this card. So I, I just, I, I'm just really excited. I'm just glad that it's, it's 17 bouts long with only two kickboxing matches. And so that means 15 fights total. I mean, man, I'm looking forward to all of them. You guys, I, I, I really can't pick what I don't like. So yeah, those, those are my three ones with the honorable mention about Bontorin's about in the flyweight division. Cause I think he's going to come in there with a chip on his shoulder, wanting to erase that, 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 uh, uh, you know, the, the new year's Eve knockout of the year candidate. So he's, he's going to be coming in there looking to really, really show what he can do as well. So I'm just, just a bunch of great fights all up and down this card. I'm really looking forward to it, man. Superior rule set in the cage. Don't get much better than this. Okay. Well, Daniel, what about yourself? Who are the three fights that you're looking forward to and what's one fight you're not? Uh, let's say uh, Tokoro Yamanika, uh, Ito Topnoi, uh, hmm. and uh, let's say uh, Ota Sato. Uh, but pl plus uh, Joji Goto's uh, fight. Uh, and uh, uh, one particular fight that uh, I'm not looking forward to, let's say Tanabe Animal Koji. <laughs> Gonna be another first, uh, another uh, quick work for uh, for uh, Fat Ninja. I see, I see. Well, all the three fights that I'm looking forward to are Tokoro versus Hiro, Kolesnik versus Takagi, and my third fight would have to be Tanabe versus Chikuwa. An honorable mention would be Miromoto versus Bontohim. But the fights, note that I say that plurally, fights that I'm not looking forward to <laughs> are involving the Sudario Kamiyama brothers. Really? Is, you don't like those sumo crossovers? Man. I mean, I, love, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm a sucker for heavyweight fights. I'm a sucker for big boy battles. As Big E once said, I'm a sucker for big meaty men slapping me. <laughs> but still, though. <laughs> Considering the fact that one of them had the damn nerve to basically, you know, basically say that he doesn't get it on the damn... I mean, what am I trying to say? But because of the fact that he almost put my brand, Focus Fights, on blast in his Instagram <laughs> story, I'm not looking forward to the Taka Kenshin versus Arato fight because, let's face it, Taka Kenshin's a lovable loser. He keeps getting finished. I mean, what what makes you think that he won't finish up? He won't get finished against the kaiju killer. And as far as Sudario versus Don Quan Kim goes, we all know what's going to happen. Don Quan Kim's going to get squashed, and it's just going to be an easy gimme fight for Sudario because they couldn't find a way to book the Todd Duffy fight. Well, because of the fact that Duffy couldn't get his visa ready in time. <laughs> but still, though. The point of the matter is I'm not looking forward to either one of them two dudes fighting because, let's face it, they want to basically keep a distance toward each other when they forget to realize they're twin brothers. They need to be there for one another. They need to show love to one, one another. I mean, don't basically put a foreigner like me on blast because y'all are trying to keep a <laughs> separate distance from one another. Okay, Gramps. I mean, all right, they're Gramps. Y'all hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Gramps. I'm, I'm a long, long, long ways off from being somebody's <laughs> granddaddy. Shit, I can't even get a. I can't even get a chick to love me, so to speak. Oh, just but not still, yet. Though, Come on, give yourself some credit. You will eventually. I know, Don't I know. get me I know. I mean, uh, considering the amount of. Hikaru Utada tracks I listen to. I mean, I think I feel more delusional <laughs> in finding love than anybody else. <laughs> but still, though, the point of the matter is, I'm not looking forward to either Taka Kenshin's fight, nor am I looking forward to Tsuyoshi Sudario fighting, because let's face it, we all know what's going to happen in both, but I just hope that those two twin brothers can get their shit straight. Oh, that's nice. I'm sure their mother would like that, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, of course. And the entire sumo community that actually followed them. But still, yeah, though, the point of the matter... Right, let's, 
I mean, let's wrap the show up. Let's wrap the show up. Is, I think a lot of people are going to think that Top Noy returning is going to be a top. I mean, it's going to be top of the card. They're going to definitely want to see more of Kolesnik, and they're definitely going to want to figure out what the hell is up with this Kai Asakura versus Koji Tanaka thing. And, you know, maybe, who knows, we might get something on New Year's Eve. We might get something here. But the point of the matter is, we're going to be, I mean, it's a wait and see approach, so to speak. But yeah, let's go ahead and wrap this shit up. Jay Wolf, you know, wait, actually, Daniel, I'm going to let you speak first. Jay Wolf, you speak second, and I'm going to speak last. So, Daniel, go ahead and put over where people can find you and how you can get contacted. First and foremost, uh, Twitter, uh, D D Z I U B I C K. I like my uh, first uh, letter of my uh, name and uh, the my whole surname. Um, first and foremost, uh, first and foremost, Twitter also and Instagram. Uh, Daniel uh, Double. Uh, what what is called? Uh, Daniel. Double D, Wait, right? Uh, no, he's talking about the underscore. He's talking about the underscore, right? Uh, underscore, yes. Uh, double yeah. underscore D. Uh, you mm-hmm. can find me on the on the Instagram. Uh, and uh, <laughs> actually, uh, that's all of my of my English uh, speaking activities or my visual activities. Uh, you can also uh, try to find uh, my YouTube channel where I'm sometimes uh, uploading some some fights, uh, maybe some uh, vlog. Uh, soon I will upload uh, my uh, vlog from from my first uh, trip to Japan, but with uh, subtitles. So, so oh, nice. uh, look forward. Nice. Okay. And also, you're, you're gonna be Jenny. doing a, 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 a. Also, Daniel's gonna be going to the the landmark seven in Azerbaijan. He's gonna have he promised some video uh, uh, stuff like that with subtitles as well. So make sure you guys check out his YouTube channel as well for for that kind of stuff. As well, and then and for me also, I, you can find me on Twitter at j a y y o l f one. It's misspelled with two y's. Easier for searching, and it's the same screen name I've had since like all the way back in 06. I haven't changed nothing, so that's how you can find me. I, if you're a real person, I'll follow you back. Also, you, I want you to check out uh, everything on Focus Fights, including this this podcast and stuff, and all the other great stuff that we've done. And look forward to next week. We're going to have a review show on both 44 and Landmark 6 here from Saturday. It's going to be fantastic. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to compare and contrast the two cards, see which, uh, uh, you know, if the lesser amount of, of fights, if, if, I mean, if the more amount of fights on Landmark 6 produces even more action, if the guys, you know, which which fighters know the assignment, all that good stuff. I can't wait to review that with you guys. Also, uh, you check out um, Teeth to the Junks, a uh, uh, YouTube channel, Random Acoustic Thoughts. We do fantastic uh, Bellator shows uh, review and previews where he also lets me talk about the epic rising and all the all the stuff that's going all the news and stuff that's going on with, with it also there's been some several new signs and stuff that we'll get to they just they mentioned a, a couple of them today I'm one I'm guessing that they're going to be announcing some more fights for landmark seven at, at this you know at, during the intermission for Landmark 6 on Saturday, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of any, any kind of new uh, bouts and stuff that we get from all, you know, because they signed a strawweight woman and a, a flyweight fighter, uh, and, and so it's, it, I'm really excited. I'm just, man, I just cannot, and hopefully I, I want to see how the, the cage event stack, if it can uh, produce, you know, enough action to get it into the event of the year candidate, as because, I mean, I'm just loving how the rising rule set in the cage Produces some action, and they've already produced two event of the year candidates. I'm hoping that this one can can you know bring some more action and and get in get up to that level and put, give them another event of the year candidate for the cage. So we'll see how it goes. I'm just I'm really looking forward to. It. Can't wait to watch it with you guys and do the review shows. So and 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 just you know check us out on. Twitter. Oh, also also one last thing the the rise in Discord as well. It's a lot of fun in there. We, 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 you know, that's where we're usually chatting up during watching the fights live in there and talking to each other. So get in there, talk with us. It's a lot of fun. And just, you know, again, and thank you guys for having me on here to talk with you about this. I freaking love it. And, you know, this is a great show, Focus Fights and Focus Fights Audio. Make sure you go to those those channels, check out all the great content there. 
and Daniel channels as well. And just, I, I can't thank you guys enough. I can't wait to watch the fights with you and, and, and to do the review shows next week. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, damn, that was, I mean, that almost felt so long. I felt like playing music. I mean, I felt like playing you <laughs> off like it was the Oscars or something. But still, though, I guess that leaves me. Well, first of all, Daniel, I thank you for t- taking control of this again because I obviously couldn't do no two-hour podcast on my own with this shitty video technology that I got. Jay Wolf, I thank you for bringing the humor. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and plug, as I just heard Jay Wolf said, you can check out what Focus Fights has in store on the link tree page in the description. Or if you don't look at the description, go to L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Focus Fights. That's where you'll see all of what Focus Fights has to offer because I don't feel like giving away all them damn plugs. You can check me out. You can check me out personally on Instagram at Christian Gary1992 and on Twitter at Chris Gary92. I'm not calling it no X. Elon Musk can go suck a giant dog. <laughs> this but Twitter, still, Twitter though, triple X for you, huh? <laughs> yeah. He the double down. <laughs> but still though, one more time. I'm going to go ahead and mention the link because one more time I'm going to go ahead and mention if you haven't gotten the Ryzen 44, Ryzen Landmark 6 bundle, you still got one more chance to do it and a few more sleeps as of the end of this podcast to do so. It'll take place. On on Fight TV. Yeah, on Fight TV. October 1st, midnight Eastern, September 30th, 11 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Well, 11 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Pacific, or in Daniel's case, you'll get it at like 6 a.m. in the morning or something. But the point of the matter is, if you feel that, if you feel that the upcoming <clears throat> Canelo versus Crawford fight is any boring, you can go ahead and check this fight card out. You'll get plenty more action. But still, though, point of the matter is, Ryzen. Landmark 6 from Nagoya Aichi, Japan, midnight Eastern, 9 Pacific. You don't want to miss it. Fight like you mean it. Check it out on Fight TV. And don't forget, when it comes to the Rising Fighting Federation, if you want to know more about them, check them out at jp.risingff.com or go to fight.tv for more information about where to watch them. Because while I ain't got time to put over Lenny Hart, Jay Wolf, I think you know what to say to end out the show, and that is... Pride never die. Pride is rising. Peace. In, indeed. And with that, <laughs> we say peace, my peoples, in one love world. Protect yourself at all times. And hey, next time we'll see you. Hopefully it won't be with a Sudario brother-like split, but still, though, <laughs> we hope to bring you more talk of fight action next time. Other than that, thanks for the company. We hope to check y'all out again real soon. Peace. <laughs>